ladies and gentlemen, we've got a show for you today. First, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning into the last interview, Smashing Success. But of course, now we got to level up. So, I mean, he's here, so there's no hiding him. We got the man himself, the legend of 47th Street, John Buckley in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's give him a little round of applause there. No big head. <laughs> of course, I'm joined as usual by my man, the Squatch Box, over in this corner here. Make sure you check him out on the gram. Down below, we got Half on Smash and Captain Subby in the house. What's up, boys? Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, before we start this party off, we'll put John on the spot a little bit with a wristwatch check, see what he's wearing today. Everyone wants to know what he's wearing. I got the old gold Daytona on the wrist today. Ali's got the Hanna Basara G Shock. Come on, fellas. What do we got down there? Uh oh, we got a speedy. We got a meteorite Pepsi. John's like, I don't give a fuck. I've been I've been like castrated here. This is what I'm wearing. Uh, oh, <laughs> hold on. Let's get John full screen for this. There, there, you, go. Go. there we go. There we go. That's a Mike place. Nouveau special. <laughs> Yo, let me tell you, I got the right buckle on it. Now I can take yeah. it off. It's it's a, whole, smaller, it's it's smaller watches are coming back, and there's there's proof right there. Listen, we were wearing ladies' watches at the booth when we, it was like 2016 or so. Carl Cohen and I just like we get on these like little like kicks, like when we get really annoyed with people because everybody was wearing the big stupid watches. And we were like, you know something? We're going to wear ladies' day dates on our wrist. <laughs> and we would have like three or four of them on like that and just like let them dangle. And That's people would look at us like we were crazy. And now it's like a thing I hear. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you guys heard of it. Uh, Trend it's not the adult version of the 1980s swatch craze where the kids would wear like yeah. a few swatches up their arm. <laughs> remember that shit? That's crazy. Yeah. I remember that. I remember. And you got to love the Carl Cohen. Huge fan. God, I, listen. Carl <laughs> Cohen is the man of the watch world. Carl Cohen is... See, guys who don't know him, okay? People watch him on TikToks and... and you where know, he, he put dares his listeners to like or his followers to continue on another day. It's so funny. Yeah. He's got such a way about him. And I know him very well we we are very very dear friends and he's got a way about him that is just you know he, he's a necessary part of any crew yep. it's like he is like I he's exactly our, what you mean. our guy you know yes. what i'm saying you guys have a yes. crew over there so it's Absolutely. like he's like our guy you know it's like he just he's like the consigliere he's yeah. like you know the one it takes a year kind of bring into you fully appreciate Oh, I got to call him. Carl, what do you think I should do? Okay, I'm over here. What kind of pizza should I get? Oh, what do you think? Oh, what do you think about, you know, who should I, should I really talk to these people? Or what do you know about them? Have you ever seen this watch that's being offered to me? Oh, yeah, it was on eBay last week. Oh, okay, good. I can lowball the guy. So, you know, it's he's one of those guys that's just got his hand in so much, like so entangled in the business. And he doesn't let on like that. That's the beauty of yeah. him. He is so low key. And I love that about him. My guy. Nice. I just want to take a minute to thank Brody for becoming a new member. Welcome, Brody. Appreciate that. Uh, sounds like it might be one of your guys, John. I do appreciate you. Uh, first of all, make sure you're following John. I'm sure you guys all are, but if you're not, follow him, uh, Tuscany Rose, on TikTok. Um, you know, if you're, if you're not following him on the gram and all the socials, get on that right away. John's a quite, quite, quite an interesting fella, I must say. Uh, so, yeah. look, I guess we should start off at the beginning. Um, so, as far as I know, you were a caseworker, right? Late 90s, mm -hmm. what, 97? You yeah. uh, started finding some stuff in the trash. Maybe you want to tell us how, how that started, how you got on your way? Uh, let's see. I always liked watches. And I was leaving my house. And I, 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 I just liked watches. And I was leaving my house. I lived on Clinton Street in downtown Brooklyn. And it was recycle day. And I look, and people are throwing out books. And right on the top of this recycle pail were like a couple of antiquorum catalogs. And one of them was the big thick one. And then there were two other ones. And I was like, oh, wow, these look like nice books to look at. So I picked them up and I took them to my, my office in Bushwick. And that's before Bushwick was fashionable. It was, you know, it, I should have known that it was going to be fashionable, but it was, it was not fashionable back then. I was on Central Avenue and Menahan Street. And um, I took them to my office and 
about, I don't know, at some point, eBay came into the picture. And a friend of mine was telling me about it. And this kid was is a flea market guy. And he was like, John, he's like one of my best friends. We grew up together. He's like, John, you got, you're got never going to believe this thing. Because we always used to like hustle together. And he's like, I was like, what the fuck is it? He's like, it's this thing online. It's like auctions. And you post a picture. He's like, right now, I got, you know, I'm making money right now. And like, do, 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 do. you know, like the antenna go right up. And I'm like, really? So I could do this? And I remember, it was probably like 97, 98, probably 98. I think I registered in 99. I don't recall what the, the circumstances were. I think in the beginning, you didn't have to fully register or something. The laws, the eBay rules were really lax in the beginning. Yeah. So I remember I put these this catalog on there and it sold for 40 bucks. And I was like, free money. <laughs> And back then there was no, uh, PayPal was just starting. There was something called Big Pay. There was another thing called UBID where they would send you like, you know, Western Union money orders and stuff like that in the mail once you sold something, and, you know, and you got paid for it. And it was just this light bulb went up off in my head. And I was like, holy shit, you know. So what I did was I would get all of my staff, all of my clients. I would be like, hey, listen, you know, go, go, you know, order these catalogs for me, okay? And, you know, I'll look out, you know, we'll have lunch and I would buy them lunch or, you know, we would look out for people and stuff like that. But I was rolling in like catalogs. I, I would call up and back then it was like the Rob Report, DuPont Registry, um, some of the other, you know, up like um, departures and stuff like that. You would find watch ads in there and they'd be an 800 number and you just call up the companies and they'd send you catalogs. And I'd have everybody call and I'd have boxes of these catalogs and I would just like sell them. This is like 98, 99. And um, made a lot of money doing that. And as I did that, I started, you know, dabbling in the watch world. I got my first um, Tag Heuer. My wife bought me, I still have it, it's in the safe. Um, a tag 1500 series that she bought me for Christmas at Macy's in 1996. Oh, yeah, so yeah. that was my, my pride and joy. It still is. And 1998, after we got married, um, I borrowed some money off my father and I put some money on American Express and I bought a 16233 from Tourneau, which I still have. And my son wears it and it drives me nuts when he wears it. I mean, he's got access to any watch that he wants that, you know, we have in the office and stuff like that. And he'll wear that watch. And I'd be like, oh my God, why are you wearing that? Where's, yeah, wear a Daytona, wear something else. Right. And, you know, like two pieces, right? My, you know, and he still does. But well, it's um, probably special to him. Well, those are the two pieces in your collection, though, right? Your first Rolex and, and the wife, uh, the watch that your wife bought you. That and the, yeah. and the estate watch, right? The Hans Wildorf watch? Right? The Wilsdorf watch. Those two, the two, first two watches are the only ones that are untouchable. Those are the only ones that I will never sell. Everything else, you know, I, I've done this a while. And a lot of guys speak of the passion for watches. And let me tell you, I had passion. Okay, I, I was, when, when I moved to New Jersey, I sold a lot of catalogs, I put a down payment on a house. And I had a new baby, new wife, new mortgage, and I moved to New Jersey. And the commute, I made my own hours. At this time, I was working a program for the YMCA. It was a really good gig. And I just couldn't do it anymore. And I put in my two weeks notice, and I said, you know what, I'm gonna give this watch thing a try. I think I tried getting a job out in Jersey, but I didn't have a degree. In New York, you could, you know, you could run programs without a degree. In Jersey, you couldn't. So they wanted me to get certified and verified and this, this, and that. And I was like, you know what? It's way too much work. I'm not getting involved in it. I'm going to sell watches and stuff. And I went to an NAWCC show, and I saw a Rolex box on some guy's table. And I walked over to him. I'm like, hey, how much is that box? It was one of those, like one of these, like one of these type boxes something like this, you know, one of these green older boxes. And he's like, ah, 30 bucks. And I was like, oh, I'll take it. He's like, do you want more? And I was like, yeah. So he's like, come out to my car. He had a minivan. He had like eight of them in the van. He's like, oh, do you want anything else? I was like, what do you have? And he started selling me, he started showing me like dials and he had them in little cases like this. 
And I was like, okay, I'll take them. And I wound up spending, I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. No, yeah. right. I'm a little slow on the special. draw here. <laughs> it was nothing special. All right. But I wound up buying a bunch of stuff from him. And that was like 2000. And from 2000, probably until about 2015, he and I met every week and I bought stuff off him. Wow. And, um, yeah, I mean. And where was he sourcing all this stuff from? Or don't ask, don't tell. He worked for the company. And at probably around 2009, give or take, they all got laid off. They All the older watchmakers got let go. And all the newer, younger, you know, less experienced, you know, less money guys for the company came on. And these guys had tremendous connections within the company. So they were getting all kinds of stuff out of there. Then they moved everything over to uh, Long Island City, and it was a different story, you know? So these guys couldn't do their little dance. Yeah, but, I heard uh, that's like Fort Knox over there. Oh, it's like Fort Knox. I mean, metal detectors. Is, but that's what they need over there because these yeah. guys were wild. I mean, these were like the OG guys. I mean, they would come out of there with like, you know, all kinds of crazy <laughs> shit. You can only and, imagine. Yeah. And uh, like I said, I mean, I bought stuff off this guy for God knows how much. You know, it was crazy. Hold on a second. I'm sorry. Well, I what, what you just want to pull up Bubba here. Bubba says, hi, John. What an honor to have a legend on this channel. Hey. If you haven't heard of John Buckley, you aren't a true watch enthusiast. Thank you, Bubba. Appreciate right. that. Did you just give me five bucks? Uh, hey. I will send it your way. I will <laughs> forward it on over. <laughs> Wait, something funny? Wait, check this out. I finally was able to monetize TikTok. Right. Okay. They sent me like $1,000 the other day. I was like, holy shit. You know, <laughs> it's yep. crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, they have oh the God. creator programs going now. Yes. So, I mean, you know, everybody get out there and, you know, comment on my shit. <laughs> there you go. Get out of the app. Make sure you follow Tuscany Rose, TikTok, sure. Instagram. Vukum, Vukum verified, right? We yeah. need the whole yeah. gang. Verified, Vukum, and then the multitude of fake accounts that they have out there. Yes. That no matter what you do, I have attorneys on it. Okay. Because some of these accounts are nasty. You know, they they imitate us. And yeah, they, no, there was a Vukum too that followed me and started like requesting stuff and trying yeah. to DM you. Yeah, they do that. They do it all over the place. It's terrible, and there is nothing you can do. I we have you know we have really good attorneys, and our social media guy, he's like John. The, the, I'm getting a dead end, you know. Meanwhile, we're like, ching, 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 ching. you know. <laughs> it's like, like John, I'm not gonna. I don't want to keep, you know, charging you for this stuff. Right, I mean, he's a good guy, you know. It's like he's like, there's nothing I could do about it, you know. And I said, okay, fine, you know. If we ever get, a, you know, blue checked on Instagram, I mean, not on Instagram, on uh, TikTok, I mean, great. If not, you know, who gives a shit, you know. But we always make an announcement that, you know, it's not. You know, it's not a good thing to, you know, if you see us, look for our followers because our followers are what set us apart from everybody else. These guys have no following. We have crazy followers. Right, so you had almost a million, right? You're one of the biggest watch TikTokers on you on uh, TikTok, right? I've got 850 plus. Tyler has a million seven. My son's probably got 40 or 50. Carl's got like 40. The Vukum Verified has another 130. You know, and, and mm -hmm. to be perfectly honest with you, I mean... We have a very, very big footprint, but I mean, from a monetary standpoint, from just, you know, TikTok and views, I mean, we have billions of views, right. billions. Yeah. And engagement, and those videos right. are really churning through the algorithm. There's so many people I know that follow me because I interact yeah. and I turn them on to like your content and they start, yeah. don't even care about watches, but they like the whole negotiation aspect of it yeah. and kind of the format that you know, Buckley Jr. perfected uh, with your yeah. videos is something that's really impressive. Yeah, I mean, my son and Tyler, uh, just a little backstory. We were talking about Christian, okay? My son's first job in the watch world was editing videos for Theo and Harris. And he was like oh, 16. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And wow. he would come home and he'd be like, Dad, I'm getting these videos. They need them for Sunday morning. They need it edited for, for Monday. I'm getting them like overnight, like four o'clock in the morning. Christian and Anna would be sending them out. And you got Christian over there with a can of old Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and a pack of Marlboros yeah. rolled up in his sleeve. Oh my God. <laughs> Christian, the fucking trip. So yeah. it, it's funny that that was like his first like 
taste of the video end of it. And then Tyler, who is Vukum, is his best friend. They're best friends since they were like eight years old. And we know the parents, we have holidays together. We know each other very, very well. And Tyler pretty much grew up, you know, with us. And James grew up with Tyler. And um, James is the camera person. And he is the one who came up with that swinging camera style that and everybody- he always gets it on the right part too. That's well, what the you know difference what when James it, is doing it versus when yeah. people are imitating it. James knows well, where to focus and where to go in the conversation. I will quote my, my wonderful son. My son, and I quote, has a deep and profound understanding of where the conversation is. Really he actually <laughs> says this in one of those videos. I know, I see that. It's like, he does. He's, He's been not around wrong, this. though. <laughs> yeah. It sounded pretty good. And, um, you know, he's been shows. Was that a proud dad moment for you when you seen that video and realizing the childhood that you and he endeared uh, next to you and all your crazy watch gadgets actually something that came to fruition for him? Can I tell you something? Can't stand the business. Can't stand it. I don't know if really? you can tell. He is <laughs> so. Yeah, he doesn't look too into it when the negotiations <laughs> are going down. If you, if you take James and Tyler, okay, Tyler grew up. You know, both of them worked very early on. I mean, you couldn't really work, you know, too early in New Jersey, but he was doing the videos for Christian. Tyler was working at English Town Flea Market loading trucks and selling, you know, whatever people would give him to sell. And they both understood that you had truck. <laughs> What's that? And whatever fell off said truck. <laughs> whatever fell off said truck. Uh, that that's that's on a need to know basis. Hey, but we don't we don't we don't know about those things over here. Uh, we're we're above board. <laughs> See, oh, and James, James would come to me to Forty Seventh Street. Come with me to Forty Seventh Street. Come with me to shows. You know, do trade shows. You know, in different states and this and that. You know, and never liked the business. The only reason he's in the business, right? And he's in the media end of it, the VUCA Media Group and yeah. Tuscan Rose Media Group. And the only reason he does it is because he makes money. He's better, you know, dealing with the chat group. He actually did, he, he was, he's waiting to get a contract renewed for the largest online auction house in the world, where he was a fraud detection specialist, where he would go in and flag fraudulent listings. He's been doing this for the last year and they're in the contract negotiation. They wanted me to do it. I let him do it because I know he, it's not that he doesn't know the stuff. It's just that he doesn't want to do the hand-to-hand -hand deal at a dealer shit. Tyler, on the other hand, is gung-ho, like wakes up in the morning like I do. You can like, tell he likes action. He likes the action. Yeah, so between yeah. two of them, I mean, it's a really good mix because one of them I've got to just pull back. The other one I've got to push forward. And they 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 created something, you know, Watch Talk, registered trademark, that <laughs> is, you know, really special. I mean, we're getting so much flack. I have to change shift gears for a minute. See, what people don't understand about VUCA Media Group is that I'm driving the bus, okay? And I've got these two, they were 21, 20, 21, 22 year olds with me. And one thing about those boys, they understand when I say to them, we have to do it this way, okay? This is the right way to do it. And, you know, they follow my lead. We spent God knows how much money on trademarks. We spend all kinds of money on legal fees. We spend accounting fees. We spend on obscene amounts of money on security. Okay, where other guys are going out buying Ferraris and living in a, you know, in a, you know, rent controlled apartment. Okay, we're out there. Tyler just bought a house. My son is saving money for, you know, when he's going to go out there and buy something. You know, it's like they're grounded, you know, and this business is really a difficult business because it's a fast paced money business. And you know, it, it's a dangerous business for young people. So I've got it. I keep my eye on both of them, but they both, you know, they understand that, you know, it, you've got to, you've got to build a really solid foundation, a business foundation. And it's not about flash. It's not about flex. None of us wear watches, you know, in the streets. I mean, we'll wear one. If my son will wear one, if he goes out or something like that, we'll mine. But, um, you know, sometimes, you know, you can't go out there and portray this this image, especially, you know, 
the way the world is right now, it's a dangerous place, you know, and I don't want to rant on the target on your back for that. You know, when, when you start doing stuff like that. Now I know Ali has a question, so I'm going to let him get in the, in there. Uh, go ahead. Sure. Ali. I see, I see you. No, go ahead, JJ. That's all right. All right, I, I don't want. I know. I, I'm just trying to. There's so many things I want to ask as you're saying yeah. stuff. And like as the <laughs> moment passes, I kind of forget. Um, but I think it's important that you were a good role model for them and showing them how to stay grounded because you see so many other people, which we'll get into in a, a little bit. I want to stay a little bit more on you first because there's a yeah. few questions people want to know. But when you see like all these people on socials with the Ferraris, the fast life, and they crumble so quick, this should be like an example, like of what not to do. Right? This is like the blueprint of avoid yeah. this and you know like you said like tyler just bought a house and your son's saving for a house do the mm-hmm. the smart things first and you can enjoy those other things if you decide yeah. to later um but before we get because i do want to ask how you transitioned and I, i'm thinking it has something to do with covid how you transitioned into more um online sales um mm-hmm. you could correct me if i'm wrong but the first question i want to ask before we get to there is when did the Buckley dial come into play? Like uh, so many people have to, Oh, it was named after him, this, that. And I always refute that you kind of named it yourself, right? Like as a proclamation kind of, I don't know if you knew it would stick or not, but um, can you tell us like, when was that? And like, how did that come about? Uh, 2000, I think it was 2008, February of 2008. And the story goes, I'm surprised you guys didn't watch the videos. Cause I did a couple of good ones on it. There's one with me and Carl Cohen at rock out loud. And there's another one with um, the owner of rock out loud, Mike, who did the, a pretty good vid- interview with me. Is that um, the one with the John Mayer with the red dial? Cause I, I don't really want to tell the whole, so I want to kind of let the audience, like I know, but I want the audience to know if they haven't seen that yet. I'm on vintage Rolex forum. And when it comes to online sales, I was doing online sales probably in 2000 because we were doing the forums, 99, 2000, and there were like maybe four forums out there. I just did a Business Insider interview, another one, and I was telling the um, interviewer this story. Um, There were like four forums. There was WatchNet, Time Zone, Vintage Rolex Forum, BJ's Online Forum, and then another forum called Turfers, I think. And um, we were, our home base was Vintage Rolex Forum. And when... I remember John, John called me actually, wow, probably like 2004, 2005, asking about a watch. And I didn't know who he was. Okay. I had no idea who he was. And I was like, okay, who are you? You know? And he's like, oh, well, you know, I'm John. Uh, I was like, okay. And I don't know who he was. He was like, well, you know, I'll send you a check. I was like, nah, send me a wire. It's a lot better. I'll get it out to you. He bought a really nice watch off me. He bought one of my Cream Explorer 2s. And um, it had service papers. It was it was just a drop dead watch. And I remember he bought it. And I remember like as he started getting into the watch world more and more, he was he. I'll tell you one thing about John. You know, there's a lot of these guys that are phony people that have not a clue about watches. Okay, John is not one of them. John knows his watches, and you know, and I respect that about him. He is not just some you know guitarist celebrity watch you know hawk out there like you know kevin o'leary or some of these other dudes out there that you know they want to tell you that they know so much about watches and it's like where the fuck were you in the last 20 years you just popped up because it's you know (laughs) because now it's popular so i mean i will say that john i mean really no i mean even back then he was he was like just sucking it up and he came on vintage rolex forum and story goes, and this is not a very good story, but he was buying all of those Texas dials, which were not authentic Paul Newman dials from dealers. And, you know, they posted one of them up there and they said, you know, we should call this the Ma- Ed Delgado, who is, I don't know if you guys know Ed, he runs DoubleRedSeaDweller.com. That was the place to go for information. It probably still is uh, on the Internet. And um, Ed was like, well, you know, we should call this the John Mayer dial. And I went fucking ape shit. I was like, what are you fucking kidding me? I mean, listen, the guy's all of a sudden, you know, I mean, no disrespect to the man. Okay. Because good guy. I mean, not, not a bad guy at all. But I mean, later on, there were some other things that went on, blah, blah, blah. But not with me, but with dealers. But. You know, I was like, no, nah, that's fucking bullshit, man. I'm out here slinging fucking dials, you know, staying up, you know, three, four days at a time, you know, making money at this thing. You're going to give this guy a dial? This guy a dial? I was like, fuck that shit. You're going to name this dial the Buckley dial. 
And I always liked those dials because nobody liked them. Everybody hated them. They were the most unpopular dial going. So I was like, hey, we're going to call this the Buckley dial. I have the post. It comes up every February. And <laughs> it stuck. It was just it was just funny because I had a very I had a pretty good online presence back there. I was a very active dealer and a very active participant in all of these chat groups. So when it, when I said it, I mean, people knew me and they knew that I was a legit guy, that I wasn't a scammer and I wasn't a fake. And, you know, a lot of my, you know, guys overseas, they were laughing about it. And then as it took on, you know, a life of its own, it's like they'll post them every once in a while. Like, hey, like Philip Stahl posted the other day a Rolex Passion Report. He's like, hey, the Buckley dial, you know, I mean, you get, um, you know, all of these guys overseas and in Asia, they all respect it and they all, you know, call it the Buckley dial. And if you look on eBay or in Craigslist, you will see people saying the Buckley yeah. dial. They post it I think you deserve it because, and not to blow smoke because you're here, but you were like, everyone wanted to jump on, you know, the John Mayer train, right? Because he's mm -hmm. famous, let's name the dial. And you're like, hey, wait, wait, we're on the front lines here. We're putting in the, yeah. the, yeah. the, the miles on the here. Like, <laughs> I, if anything, you're going to name this. This is my dial. You know, I, I you can respect that. You know, you got to respect that. Yeah. Nobody else pushed it. Listen. Every, people try to do it, okay? People try to, like, you know, name things after themselves, and it doesn't work out that well. I did it because, number one, I had a really good reputation as a person who knew his shit. I mean, you got to realize that from, I don't know, 98, 99 through probably 2010, I mean, I was, like, really dialed into this. No pun intended. I mean, just, like, super passionate about it. I would wear like crazy watches I and mean, I have pictures, you know, on vacation and all these wild places with all kinds of stuff, you know, big, I used to like big, crazy factory diamond dial sport watches and, you know, cool Oh, you got to bust out the pictures sometime. <laughs> I will. I will. I have a picture of me, my son and my wife at Dunn's river falls and I'm wearing a red, white and blue, uh, Patriot GMT. And I swear to God, I was leaving the place and I was walking around like this. Because he's coming up to me, hey, hey, you want some beads? You want this? I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. it's not a good idea. Yeah, I mean, imagine I would that go... walking through Jamaica with a saru on. <laughs> oh, I stopped wearing Paul Newman's when they hit like 100 grand. I think the last one I had, I bought off Eric Koo. I bought a 6241 and it was drop dead. And I think I took that watch on vacation. I wound up selling it afterwards to Bob Marin. And I traded it to him for a couple of paddocks or something like that. But it was like the last Newman that I actually really wore regularly. And I mean, I'm talking, you know, when you're talking about screw down Newmans, I mean, this was a pump Newman, a 6241. But I had 6263 Newmans like in the early 2000s. I mean, I had one that I paid 10 grand for and it got served. No, I paid 11 grand for it and it got serviced. And the market crashed after 9-11. I wound up selling it for 10 you know, a two color, you know, a Panda Newman, you know, oh, and, uh, you know, probably worth seven, 800 grand today. Yeah. Yeah, you know? but then. <laughs> that's the nature of the business. You know, if I go through all my old hard drives and I look at some of the stuff that I've had, it's like, it would blow your mind. I mean, stupid, crazy stuff. I mean, just really crazy stuff that I bought and sold. Cause I was always a dealer's dealer, you know, but I would keep, I would never collect you know, I was not a collector. I was a dealer. I would wear stuff. I'd get sick of it. I'd buy other stuff. I'd get rid of it. You know, I'd make money with it. That was the means to an end. I always wanted to make money. And right around 2000, I don't know, I was still wearing watches like up until COVID. And then I just kind of, I, I, I kind of lost my taste for it. I just did. And I still haven't got, got a taste for it. When I wear a watch, I feel uncomfortable, you know, I mean, and I'll wear my orange hand. I mean, I'll wear a Daytona. I got the Alice Cooper Daytona, which is like my favorite Daytona these days. I mean, it needs a service, but uh, still, it's still cool, you know? You've become like the, the barber who doesn't get a haircut anymore. Yeah, right? You know? <laughs> but, but I see sometimes when you're at certain vendors, like Faber, uh, whenever yeah. you go up to see him, usually he'll have a watch or two that gets you, uh, that, that you could tell you get excited. You know what? He sold me... Um... He sold me some cool watches. I've known Ed for a long time. And I mean, I, I, I like cool stuff. I mean, that's my thing. I love cool stuff. I'm a habitual buyer. I have an issue. 
And he and, always has a good story with a lot of the watches, right? Oh There's always God. some type of provenance or, yeah, he knows yeah, how to kind hey, of put the package together. Like, hey, John. And I mean, yeah. the guy is always on. It's like yeah. he's a great person to do business with because if you're filming, it's like no matter what he's talking about, he makes he's like this. He's like really excited about it. He still has that passion. You see me, I'm over there like this. I'm like, oh, God. Just how much <laughs> yeah, he's, he's one of my podcast. favorite guests that you have on there. H- him, I love little Eddie and Yash. Those are my guys. Yeah. Uh, Yash is a boss. Man. So yeah. is little Eddie. I was up there today, but he's in Milan. I'm not. I'm sitting here. Oh, I'm with you fine gentlemen, but <laughs> – <laughs> so you got right you've got over two decades in the space you as you said yeah. you kind of started with this whole catalog thing accidentally fell into it you're now you know the leading or one of the leading social media personalities in the space you've seen people come and go you've seen crime rise and fall you've seen the industry rise and fall multiple times right so you you survive right like the the proverbial meteorite has hit the planet a few times and oh, yeah. and John Buckley has survived, right? So yeah. you are the apex or one of the apex predators right now. I'm like, okay. So the chair of the watch world. That's me. Let's let's without the plastic surgery. All right. Well, you're beautiful with it. So right now, mm-hmm. what you're seeing out there, this is what people want to know. At least this is what I want to know. What just mm-hmm. is absolutely utterly fucking pissing you off? with what's going on right now with how certain personalities get all the attention or drive the new market? The new market is driven by social media and driven by hype. That's the problem, okay? And that's why we're the anti-hype guys. I mean, if you look at, I mean, uh, obviously you're, gonna ref- you're referring to a uh, timepiece gentleman. Is that who you were? Oh, I have about? no idea who I'm referring to. No, not at all. <laughs> well, yes. I mean, there's multiple yes. people who have it's that. Multiple right? people. He's right. he's the he's the pinnacle of douchebaggery right Head now. Of the but he's Head not of the, the first, and he won't be the last. Well, they issued a, an arrest warrant for him today. I don't know if you guys heard that. I did actually. Hmm. I, I heard that. Um, yeah, it's for the DUI, I believe. But yeah. if they pick him up, they're not going to let him go. He's not going anywhere once yeah. they get him. And yeah. in LA, supposedly. Ali, I think you pegged him as the Emperor of Grift. <laughs> yeah, the Emperor of Grift. Yes. Well, from from what I saw, they have he has a um he had an appearance for August thirtieth, twenty twenty three, and then a warrant out because you know I guess he didn't show up for the last one. But I don't know how it's August thirtieth. That part confused me. I guess that was the date. Yeah, was strange. Close, yeah, when it's the sixteenth now. So I'm not sure if that's fake or, or not. I mean, I know I've spoke to. Other people who have said like he puts plants in people's comments and stuff to give them false info, so you, you don't know what's really true and what's not with They're him. Free. He's a dumb per. He's dumb in a lot of ways, but he's extremely cunning in others. Yeah, in, in, a, in a bad way, he's dangerous, you know, to himself and others. And I mean, look, if you guys know the context, if you guys, I don't know if you did, you guys speak with Bob, Arizona Bob. Um, not on the show. Yeah, not I'm actually yet. having him on Friday. He's coming on. Um, I've spoke to him just, you know, personally. Yeah. Well, the way this thing came about, he went dark about three weeks ago. He was like, I'm going off social media. And in my mind, it's like, okay, he's probably going away for a couple of weeks on his DUI. And I'm one of these guys, I'm not going to like lay into anybody unless there's good reason to, because I've seen this guy do stupid shit and come back. You know, but I'm not one of these guys that's just going to like, you know, waylay somebody. I, I always give you the benefit of the doubt. Uh, you know, you prove me to be, in, uh, to be wrong about something and I will come after you. And I was on my TikTok live. It was two weeks ago on Monday. And people were like, oh, timepiece gentleman is going dark. And I was like, listen, you know, he's done it before. It's probably a publicity stunt, blah, 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 blah. And there were rumors circulating that he had done some really bad shit. And in my live TikTok, I have the video, I, I, I downloaded it and I cut it up so that you can see the exact moment if I ever need to. Um, Bob pops on and he's like, you know, he, you can't see the comments, but he's like, I was taken for two watches. And I was like, really? Because I had not heard of anybody actually saying that. So at this point, it's like, okay, maybe the guy's full of shit. Maybe he's just a troll. Who knows? 
So I was like, okay. I was like, well, you know, if that's the case, you know, and he starts going into it. And I was like, wow, you know, he got hit for almost 200 grand. You know, maybe the guy's not making this up. I was like, listen, hit me up, you know, on TikTok. I'll give you my number. And he sends me the video of Anthony saying, you know, that he staged the robbery that, uh, and this was on that Monday. And he was like, John, oh, so that, don't video that leaked to the wider internet. You seen that, but you I heard it a day or two before. First. And okay. at that moment I came back on TikTok and I just went off on him. I was just like, you know, this guy is a fucking scumbag and be damned. I mean, you know, if I was wrong, but I believed Bob and Bob was a credible guy. He's an honest guy and a good guy. And, you know, that's how the ball started rolling. Then Bob posted the video and we were off and running. But when you talk about, you know, watch dealers, they're, they're promoting the flex. They were promoting the lifestyle. And you've got kids, like in my world, okay, I looked at him and I'm saying to myself, and I remember when he was with Marco, and I, I say this all the time. I saw Marco the other day. He came to my show. He asked me if he can come and shoot a video. And you know what? I said, yeah, sure. I wasn't going to allow the stench of Anthony that Marco is going to carry with him for eternity to cloud my judgment because I've never really seen anything, you know, tangible about Marco that's not good. If somebody comes up with something, well, maybe I'll change my opinion. Okay. Mm -hmm. I did a, an interview with him and Grand Caliber in the lab. And you know what? He was a pleasant guy. You know, so tangible. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt you. This is actually interesting because we had Wesley on, and I'm sure you're familiar with Wesley. Tangible oh, yeah. is one of those things that I struggle with here because Marco Nicolini was my entry point to eventually what became Time T. Shell, and I I had dealt with Marco before. And one of my problems that I've said on air is the number of people that are getting drugged through the mud for some sort of association with Andy Fair, and the fact that everybody is willing to not only forgive, but congratulate Marco and Grand Caliber. Not that he doesn't deserve it, as you said. right? You and people like Paul Thorpe have said, I'm not going to judge people unless you give me something tangible. But what is tangible to people like you? Tangi that, okay. Right? Here, I'll tell you what tangible is. Tangible is like Bob sent me. Listen, I'm from the old school, okay? You go around and you say talk some shit about somebody, you get your fucking head cracked, okay? That's where I come from. I grew up in South Brooklyn in the 60s and 70s, okay? It's not like that on social media. I got some 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 people, you know, talking all kinds of trash to me on TikTok, and it's like, what are you, fucking crazy? It's like, if, if these people were, you know, in front of you, they wouldn't say things like that, right. okay? But a lot of people like to go back and like pick apart videos, pick apart this. You come at me with something tangible, meaning Bob sent me a video that I knew was Anthony on the other line and him saying, wow, I owe these people money. I'm sorry, I've got to get you this money back. I'm going to send you a sea dweller, you know, as, as some sort of fucking payola. And oh, I, I faked a robbery. At that moment, it was like, doo, 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 doo. that's yeah. it, this is good. You send me something like that about anybody else, I'll have an opinion about them. But where I come from, you don't just judge somebody and slander them for no reason. Just because a whole bunch of mo a mob scene is, you know, it's that, it's that mob mentality in the watch world, okay? Mm -hmm. It's like a lot of people didn't really, you know, want to say anything about him because they were in bed with him. See, I wasn't, okay? I, don't, I didn't do business with any of these people. I do business with 12 people, okay? <laughs> the same 12 people that, you, you know, that you'll probably see. Most of them aren't even on my TikToks. And when you do business with very few people, you know, my hands are clean in a lot of ways. So I could say whatever the hell I want. And, you know, it's like, I, I know Marco is going to carry the stench of this guy for the rest of his career. Okay. And it, he will never be able to shake it. So there's a part of me that's like, you know, and, and I'll give you a story. Okay. I sold them. I don't know. I sold Marco some stuff back when he was with Anthony way back in the day. I mean, ticky tack shit. Thousand fifteen hundred dollars took me a while to get paid, okay. And I say that and I'll say it to anybody's face. I don't give a fuck, okay. Took me a little bit to get paid, and I was annoyed. And I have texts, okay. I don't lie, okay. <laughs> I've been sober for a long time, okay. I don't fucking lie, all right. And it's like <laughs> you can't condemn somebody unless there's really a reason to condemn them. It's like, oh well, you know, this guy sold a. Uh, a watch that had a fake box. It's like, all right, you know what? Uh, okay. And then he makes good. You give him a fucking box. Okay. Right. People make mistakes, all but right. somebody's stealing money. Okay. At that level is a whole other ball game. As far as I'm concerned. 
you know, and a no, lot right, of people... no, that's fair because this is your this is what I said to Wesley. Like some of these things, even being victim is a spectrum, right? Like Wesley could yeah. be 90, 90 percent, five percent a victim, right? But there's always like some wiggle room. The question is, are you gonna shit on people for that? And you really shouldn't. Right. And that's what you're saying here. And Paul Thorpe to a large degree is saying the same thing, but people, the mobs, the TikTok mobs, the Instagram mobs, yeah. YouTube mobs have oh, the red boys. Yo, yeah, red. Reddit is worse those than boys. Yeah. those boys right. don't play. Those no. boys are I, I I don't I don't understand. Like how they, they, they just sit there and come up with this stuff. You know, a lot of it is accurate. Some of it is a little wild. Okay. But some of that stuff they come up with is, is good stuff. And how so they can triangulate one of the where he is people. from a quick photo. Yeah. Sorry, no, they've bro. done all sorts of, so Captain is one of the 12 people that John Wesley like, does business with. Bro, you they should have in? Like Jerry Orbach should be going in there or some shit like <laughs> yeah. that. Dead and shit. I mean, that's crazy. But let me tell you something. Okay. Uh, look, you want to talk about Wesley, okay? I spoke to Wesley for the better part of 45 minutes really early on in this thing, and I got to tell you something, okay? As a business person, okay, I question a lot of the decision-making and whether or not it was self-serving. I'm not going to throw somebody on the, under the bus, but I will give you my reasoning behind it, okay? I, I'm not throwing anyone under the bus, but I question, you know, his whole MO. It's like, hey, look, you know, you gave this guy by your own admission, I don't know, 200 watches. So you're doing business with this person at that level, okay? And you don't have an operating agreement. You don't have a, a separate LLC set up for the two of you to, you know, to join, you know, your bank account so that you have access to the same funds and you see the money coming in. You're just going to trust this guy with that kind of money? It's like, I don't buy it. You know, I, I just don't buy it. That is not even in my, my worst business deals where I've lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. OK, that's what really triggered me about this. It's like it kicked up a whole bunch of shit in me when I had a bad deal. A long story about a construction company, blah, 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 blah. OK, but that kicked up my shit when I spoke to Bob because Bob was a solid guy. And it's like he didn't deserve what happened to him. OK, now I don't really know Wesley that well. I spoke to him. OK, and you know what? He could be, you know, telling the truth. In my eyes, it's like, how do you get involved at this level? And you, you have attorneys. You, have, you run a business, okay, a pretty successful business, yeah. supposedly. And it's like, you don't understand that you got to have a separate LLC. You got to have a separate operating agreement. You got to yeah. have, you know, access to. I mean, by, by his own admission, right? He, he definitely made poor decisions along the way. But there's all sorts of questions. Like he's not tech savvy, and a lot of people on Reddit, everybody. I don't buy that. Right. Well, I mean, so a lot of people to... that. But then the question is, how is he on TikTok to find Andy in the first place? Like how, right? So there's a lot of little things like that. At the end of the day, you're right. There was, and he admits it, there were profit motives, maybe a little bit of excitement. It, probably not lifestyle because he probably could have had a lot of lifestyle. Something, again, like I said, it's a spectrum. Something is still not being said, whether for its embarrassment sake or what, right. you know, that's fair. But I'm not looking at Wesley as he's just a bad dude. I'm not personally. Hang on one second, guys. I just got, I just... I'm not saying the man is a bad dude. What I'm saying is he was complicit. He was involved in this at some at some level. Okay? And you know what? Hey, you're dealing with that kind of money, okay? You're a businessman? Come on, bro. Come yeah, on. Hang, on, hang on one second, guys. Hang on Where one Bob second. was an enthusiast. Hang on one yeah. second. I got, I got dude, talking about millions of fucking dollars. No, John, everybody can be really enthusiastic about watches, okay? But when you're talking millions of dollars going back yeah. and forth, you've got to, something's got to click off in your head. And it's like, hey, wait a minute. I'm sending right. this guy money without even checking up on where they're going, how they're being used, where the money's coming from. We don't have an agreement. I don't see the bank accounts. Where are the bank statements? Are you fucking serious? Come right. on. So this is getting Steve and JJ. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go, go, I, got, I, got, I, I got to put this in there because now, John, this is your interview and this is totally not anyone trying to blindside, I guess. Wesley's watching the show and he just messaged me if he could come on. That is up to you. I, I don't I don't want you to like I'm not trying to do an ambush. I guess he wants to respond to some of what we're saying now. You want totally. listen. I don't think he think it's an ambush anyway. I'm just putting it out. Fine with me. I have no problem with that. All right. I I just want to no. ask because you know I I just wanted to ask because I appreciate you coming on. I don't want to make it look like oh I have him waiting. Like he's in the chat now and he's asking <laughs> hey, for the link. Hey. 
<laughs> that's like the Seinfeld episode with the Merv Griffin show or some shit like that, right? Look who's backstage. <laughs> Surprise. You yeah. open it. You, John opened the door and he's coming right through. Here he comes. I'm definitely not doing that, but I did send the, he asked for the link. I wanted to ask you first if you're good with it. If you know, I guess I he's to, in the chat and he hears it. I'm not, you know. I mean I have right, right. you're 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 asking valid questions, you're raising legal issues of like how did you document this? When did this become, you know, as this became bigger and bigger, you're in business together. So yeah. you know, as a businessman, you're experienced, you would have LLC operating agreements, checks and balances on bank accounts, escrows, etc. That gets to my yeah. issue of consignment generally as to oh, why they, it's nasty. We didn't even get into that as to escrows <laughs> or the potential for using escrows or some segregated accounts for consignment. But that's separate. And if uh, we're going to have a guest, another hey, guest hey, joining us. Just for optics, just so that yes. you can look and say, hey, you know, TPG is this account. This could be TPG West, TPG W or right. something like that. Well, but yeah. Going into this, you're going to enmesh all of those funds. How are you going to do tax returns? How are you going to do, you know, how are you going to do a PL? It's like, come on, man. <laughs> well, these, are, these are all valid questions. And if he yeah. comes on, I mean, we could we could ask him well, listen, these. So, you know, it's about, I'm saying it, you know, listen, if he wants to come on, that's fine. That's cool. Right. Okay. But I'm saying it rhetorically. It's like, wait right. a minute. Okay. It's like, how in the world are you going to do a PL with this? Does this guy have an accountant? I mean, when I spoke, listen, I'm not going to blow Wesley up like that, okay? But when he and I spoke, he told me some stuff that blew my fucking mind, okay? Just blew my mind about this whole thing. And it's like, okay, you know this about this dude. And it's like, you didn't ask all this shit in the beginning? You know what the first thing I ask for if I'm going to do something with somebody that that's like that kind of – I have a chat group, Okay. For dealers only. You know what I get from them? I get P&Ls. I get tax returns. I get my account to talk to their accountants. It's checks and balances. When you're bringing people into something, that's what keeps people safe. Okay? It's like when you do your due diligence, that's what it's all about. And maybe it's because I'm a sick motherfucker and I'm a little nuts with that kind of stuff because I've been burned in the past too. OK, we've all been burned in this business, you know, but it's like you've got to, you, you've got to, you know, when you're talking about that kind of money. OK, on a, you know, ebb and flow going in and out. It's like, man, you know, it's like, what are you thinking? So and then we, it, we, we may be waiting for we may be waiting for Wesley here. Right. He may he's welcome to join, obviously. But you just brought something up that I, you know, he's I been have wanting a little bit of experience on, on. Right. Oh, hold up. He's been wanting to get on with me for a long time. I've been holding off on it for that reason, because I'm just, you know, it's like something doesn't smell oh. right. Yeah, that's, sorry. that's 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 up to Tim and, and obviously JJ asked for permission. But I mean, I brought up with it. If he shows up, shows up, I your access right my personal experience was something a little experience i did with uh, experiment i did with mondani right or let's say the motor groups doesn't seem like there's a lot of control or you know the motor groups they they try to do very stuff right i don't but there doesn't feel like there's a lot of control there doesn't feel like there's a a <laughs> bouncer at the door like in any mm. real sense well no I mean, you got to realize that moda has a lot of people okay and it, I know Vadim, and I know a lot of guys do not like Vadim, okay? I like Vadim, okay? Vadim is a, is a very good marketing person, and he's, you know, look, you say what you will about the guy. The guy built a fucking empire out of that shit. So Whether it's a Faustian not, bargain at this point, basically. Pardon me? It's a Faustian bargain at this point. Yeah, I mean, look, when you deal with, like, chat groups, okay? I've been in chat groups and online forums for a long time. The first chat group that I, the first real chat group that we formed for watch dealing is Watch Flippers. Okay, it was thirty of us on Facebook. It's now like four or five hundred people in a chat in a Telegram group. Okay, my chat group we have a Vukum dealer only group. Okay, it's got maybe two hundred and fifty people in it. Okay, and we are very proactive when it comes to any kind. I am the I am the ultimate gatekeeper, but I have moderators in there that are very, very quick to let me know if something's wrong. And when it's dealer to dealer, there's really not that many problems, okay? When you get into the Vukum Verified chat, okay, which is 20 bucks a month and anybody can join and there's no real vetting in there, okay? We have to teach people how to, you know, vet people on their own. And we have a very, very good process that we show people. And, you know, we get people that, you know, like you were saying that there's a million John Buckleys out there. It's like, hey, listen, if you're going to do if John Buckley will never solicit you, John Buckley barely posts in, unless there is, you know, a reason for me to post. 
okay, when it comes to posting items for sale and stuff, because I really don't sell to the public, yeah. okay? But if somebody approaches you and says, you know, hey, I'm John Buckley, and it happens to these guys a lot, you know, in the rules, it's like, ask for a FaceTime. Say, I want to FaceTime you, John, and you'll see how fast they disappear, the account goes away. And it's the same thing with Tyler, okay? The main dealers that are in the group that, that have, you know, come up are guys that we brought in from, you know, from nothing that started as side hustle guys and they're making money in our group, but it all comes down to accountability. You know, if somebody does the wrong thing, they're out. It's like, there's no, we, we we'll throw, you know, dealers out for doing stupid shit. We had a dealer on um, in our face. There's a Facebook group that's connected to the WhatsApp, the, not the WhatsApp. Well, the WhatsApp and the Telegram group. We have a Facebook group, maybe 15,000 people in it. It's a monster to like, moderate i don't know how that dean does it with all these other people but he's got a lot more moderators but we have very high high quality moderators like he does and we make sure that if somebody posts something that is questionable someone posted something you know an uh, aftermarket crystal with you know a rolex coronet on it it was like bam he's gone i don't care it's an established deal i was like fuck it he's out we do not let any counterfeits i will not let seiko mod watches in my group i will not let fake um, Cartier love bracelets in my group. That shit doesn't fly with us. We run a really tight ship over there and that's because I am the gatekeeper. And a lot of the guys don't agree with it, okay? And I understand the guys with Seiko mods and shit like that. It's like this kind of crap. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I won't allow this kind of shit in my group. Yeah, right. Where they're gonna like, you know, utilize, you know, Rolex. All right, you know, so Moto. I hate shit like that. I don't like that. I hate fake. So Vadim like Moda, he's earned his stripes, right? Some Faustine bargains, but he's earned his stripes. He's a good guy. He's doing a good job. Cap would agree, right? Mondani. Yes, I would. I got to know. <clears throat> Mondani. Mondani? Yeah. Georgia? Yeah. I was at a wedding. I don't know if you know. All right. That. No, I don't know that. So. What the hell? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm here. Okay? You can ask me anything. Mondani group. They asked me to pay for that group. I'm not one that pay. I pay for Bob Marin's group. Okay. And it's an expensive group. I pay for watch flippers. Okay. I pay for groups. I mean, we all do, you know, as dealers, that's part of the game. Georgia's mm. group. I mean, Georgia is a publisher. Okay. Guido is the brains behind all of it. Okay. Georgia is learning the ropes and her husband, Daniel. I sat with Bob Marin at her wedding in um, Portofino in uh, Santa, Santa Margarita, excuse me. And, you know, Georgia sells books. She got into, she, she got some traction on Instagram. I don't know whether it was botted. I don't know whether it was organic, whatever. And she utilized that to pretty much, you know, catapult herself into this world of buying and selling watches. Now, buying and selling watches, even for people with, and george has got great pedigree. Guido is a good guy and he's an OG, he's OG, okay? But you never really heard of him outside of Italy. Okay, I did because I'm in the business. And that group is not really moderated very well, to be perfectly honest with you. I know it isn't because I know of issues that come about in there. Right. Like, like I've heard that, about the I've heard about you could just like buy, right? You could become a trusted seller by just buying like an advertisement basically. It kind of gives a bad idea of like <laughs> this guy's trusted why because he gave you a hundred bucks. Like it doesn't make any sense. Uh, just real quick, because yeah. Wesley is backstage. Uh, he did click the link. <laughs> I just want to get my man Jeremy Butcher twenty dollars. He says Buckley dial. Only thing I wear when busting heads in Brooklyn. Good show, everyone. Love the perspective from John. And I think we got <laughs> one more guys. If I'm missing any, I'm sorry. I just I don't want to mess up the integrity of the uh, of the interview with John. We got Watch Lounge says cheers from Forest Hill Queens. And That's I guess nice. we'll get Wesley on the show now. Wesley, thanks for joining us. There he is. Hey man. Almost says, okay, hey Wesley, how's it going? Hey. Welcome. Yeah, how are you? All right, we're just uh, we're doing an interview. I when you uh, sent me the message for the link, uh, I I didn't see it for a bit, but uh, I sent that over once I once I saw you there. Yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't like. I sent you the link way before it started. Somebody just told me that y'all were on, so I wasn't, watch. I wasn't necessarily like trying to respond to anything John said, but I think there was a lot of stuff that really wasn't you know true there. And I just again, I'm doing all this so people know the truth. So maybe a good time to talk about it. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, hey, man, that's what we're here for. Yeah, you know, you spent two hours on with us before. Like you, you, uh, at, like John, you're not afraid to address anything. Clearly, both of you aren't afraid to talk about stuff publicly. So, we'll hand it to you know you at the moment if you want to 
kind of be your own interlocutor here. Right. No, I guess, um, John, you mentioned a couple of things. I don't really recall off the top of my head because I was scrambling to get the kids um, out of the bathtub and all. But, like, you mentioned operating agreements and stuff like that. I'm not in business with Anthony. I never was. I, I started by giving him, you know, five pieces on memo. Um, mm-hmm. I don't have to do any balancing on his part. If I gave him a watch, he gave me more than that back in return. Um, and it, it just it went on that way for, you know, maybe a month. Um, and then at one point he had as many as 60 to 80 watches. And, you know, we had very good accounting of what was sold, who it was sold to, how much. And in eight days time, that money never came back. Um, so it, it, it ended just as fast as it started, so to speak. Um, the millions of dollars you speak of is not really me doing business with him as far as business to business transactions. You know, everything in the beginning was me buying from him as a retail client. Um, you know, just cause I didn't know better. Listen, I mean, if that's what you're saying, I, you know, I hear you. I mean, my point is, you know, you're handing this guy 60 to 80 watches I'm and a- and that aspect, yeah, I mean, just simply put, I don't mean I'm, um, I think your word was complicit. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we're very good at this. And here's, here's, the other, here's the other issue that, I mean, you know, if you want to address stuff, let's address it. Okay, yeah. when he started posting those consigned watches and stuff like that, and we had somebody check it out to see where the wire was going, it was going to some other account in South Carolina. Okay, and that always rubbed me the wrong way. When he first, you know, when he was like, oh, I'm going to start consigning watches. This was like right after that shit broke. And I have the invoice with wire information. And it's like, so who else is in South Carolina that's got a dummy LLC that's, you know, receiving money from this guy? That did not sit with me. And I don't know what the explanation is for that or if there is one. But if there is one, you're, you're free to tell us about it. If there's some explanation, maybe it's somebody that you don't know. I don't know. But it seemed rather odd to me that a guy that's working out of, you know, L.A. has, you know, a shadow company in South Carolina. I, I, I just didn't understand that. No, that that makes sense, John. So and we talked about all this the other night. Um, he was posting stuff that wasn't his. So yes. when it, he reached out to a couple of dealers trying to find one, he called me, um, actually texted me and he wanted to buy that watch from me. And I told him, you know, my attorney said that I'm not going to take any wires and things like that from him at this point with everything that was going on. So I told him I would have to invoice the client directly and they could wire me directly. That's not a dummy LLC account. Um, that is a, a account for a, um, several different kind of investment businesses we have. Yeah, but um, you already knew that this guy was, was, you know, was doing dirty shit. And meanwhile, you're over there, you know, getting in bed with him so that you can sell watches that are yours. Well, I, I mean, mean that's I, I, getting in bed with him. I, yeah. I get you get it. But it's like, you understand that this guy's going to have an investigation like up the wazoo and you're going to be right in the middle of it. And yeah. that little piece right there is not a very good piece to hang your hat on. I'm sorry to say. And that's always rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah. And, 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 and that's fine. I respect that you're entitled to that. But at the end of the day, he couldn't do that client wrong. That client was going to wire me directly. I was shipping a watch from my hands to him. And when he owed a million bucks, it's irrelevant. back in my pocket was, was a good feeling. Yeah, so what was it, Wesley, just so I'm clear, what was the timeline on that? So you're, you're clearly, you're, you're open with what this dealing is. So this broke. is after you've learned that Anthony owes you the money. After it was and it's in the early black. stages of trying to this recover was, some of the money. Yeah, so this was after he owed me money, after we had picked everything up. He flew to my office. He got in late Thursday, met with my guys Friday. He left Friday afternoon. Saturday morning, he called and texted and needed to get a, a watch. So at that point, you had already talked to accountants and counsel and proceeded to do this either way? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So you have some professional input, whether, I mean, John, for obvious reasons, everybody has different counsel well, and stuff. I'm just curious. Thing, what the hell was he doing in South Carolina? Why did he have to go over there to sit down and have a conversation? He couldn't do a Zoom call? It's like, I don't understand that either. John, you know, listen, in bus- street, like, that sounds goofy to me. Just doesn't sound kosher. Sorry, and I'm not Jewish. Yeah, John, if somebody owes you a million dollars and they've been lying and running all over the place, the best way to uh, address that is head on. That's my yeah. So he, we went told- <laughs> he wouldn't have left there <laughs> without a limp if that was me, to be perfectly honest with you. And, and, that's, mean, this- and yeah. that's 
I wasn't there. And we discussed all this last week, and I'm glad to know that, um, you know, that, that you didn't hear it. But, yeah, I mean, he flew there, and he met with uh, one of the operation managers for my other business. And they went over things, and it was clear that it just wasn't going to work out. There was nothing we could do. And, you know, Jason called me that night and said, you know, we're just – we're not going to get our money back. Um, and we just – we kind of accepted it. Um, we had a deadline in which he had to pay us back. Yeah. Same way he had with Bob and a few other people. Um and he didn't make it. So at that point, we we move forward, you know, legally. That's still where we're at now. And that deadline is, was before or after you had the the interview with JJ last week. Yeah. So the the deadline, um, I mean, technically would have been Wednesday. Um, okay. But he, you know, a, as of Friday, we knew. Um, you know, my guy just told me to hang it up. There's no way. You know, he's not gonna. Or he's never. gonna be. He's definitely judgment proof. <laughs> I mean, the guy's got nothing in his name, I'm sure. He's probably yeah. got somebody else running an L. What was the LLC that, I mean, was there something called Time Keys Gentleman LLC? Was there an account? Was there a P&L? Was there, was there a tax return? I remember you were telling me about this. And yeah. it's like I don't crazy. Wanna, yeah. And since then, John, you know, when I talked to you, it was before I really got any legal counsel on it. But um, I don't I don't need to discuss this personal stuff. Got but, it. Uh, as totally far as accounting, I'm crystal clear. I mean, just simple as that. I gave him a watch. He paid me back. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's very black and white on my end. Um, yeah. At the end of the day, I did. I'm sure his end is is every color in the rainbow. It, it's I mean, back to the day. I've made a dumbass decision have business with the guy. Um, I accept mm -hmm. that. I think I was the first to ever admit that. But um, I mean, the truth is that's as far as it, it goes. And, and the way we were set up, he asked me to invest in his business, John. Several times as a, uh, you know, as a, a stakeholder, and we just weren't willing to do it. Um, and you know, would it at, ever they, come up with any kind of any kind of prospectus, any kind of you know, any kind of paperwork? As when somebody comes to me and they want me to invest, okay, and every once in a while I'll get this, and people know me, I'm extremely, you know, <laughs> not for that kind of stuff. I don't need to get involved in anything that I don't know about. But I get people that they're like, hey, you know, I want you to, uh, you know, I want to put some money up and we'll buy watches together. I'm like, oh, man, please. You know what? It's like, I don't, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want any partners. I don't want any hassles. I got two partners, both of one of them lives upstairs. The other <laughs> one, you know, is his best friend and I get it. But I mean, if I would have to, you know, present my business to somebody, I mean, there'd be an accountant involved. I mean, did this person ever even, you know, mention an accountant or some, or was he QuickBooks or something like that? Now, to be by the way, for everybody who's watching, and there are some victims, invariably some victims, we either see this or in the chat. Wesley did a, a full two hours with us the other day. He also had offered very generously uh, a kind of legal defense fund for victims that, you know, to reach out and stuff. So that's covered in that episode. Um, and Wesley, again, thank you for jumping on. We're not trying to ambush you or John here. This is, but this is bloody fascinating because there is a certain, there is a new school and an old school, you know, that has become new school approach. So I appreciate both of you talking about this in the open. Hey, John, one thing, he's in this amount of time in the business, he's learned a lot of hard lessons that maybe he's not talking Listen. about. Now, but he, he knows from experience, in my opinion. You know, he's mm -hmm. he's done what I've done, but he's he's he, you know he's he's learned. But John, as far as paperwork and accounting. Mm -hmm. He had everything that anybody would want to see to be invested in. Um, the sales he were all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I got all of it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, no, it's, I the numbers are real. The problem is, I think it was just blown. Um, you know, he could have lived a very, very comfortable lifestyle, and I think he was just trying to live outside of his means, and that's where the no, appearance. If his expenses are, are eating away at that, he's got to be taking distributions. And, and, you know, and it's like, that's what I don't get, you know, it's like yeah. there, there's, like you, know, well, you know what, that's going to be up to the lawyers and the accountants mm -hmm. and the IRS, because the IRS is going to have a field day with this, but they're not going to do very much because they're not going to get a hell of a lot out of this guy. It's going to take him a hundred years to pay back some of that money if he could ever pay it back, which is sad for the victims. And I feel bad, you know, on a personal level, I, I feel for you, man. I really do. You know, because I know what it's like to lose, you know, six figures. I know, you know, seven figures. I know what it's like. You know, it's not fun. But it's like, yeah. man, you know, but, just, it, I hope I hope you get some satisfaction, man. I really do. I yeah. wish you satisfaction in this. It was um, 
I mean, it was my fault that I'm in the situation I'm in. We talked about this the other night as well, but Anthony flew out there because he wanted me to do business with him the same way he wanted a few big dealers, none like myself, to do business with him. And the agreements that we were trying to make were that, you know, I mean, if he sold a watch to have five grand profit, you know, 100% of that profit was going towards the debt he owes to people. And if he did that with me, it's very clear black and white in all of our um, all of our paperwork we were putting together. And I think I showed that the other night. I was the very last person to get a dollar back. So, Bob, everybody else on that list, the first four million got paid back before I was ever to see a dollar. Um, yeah. But we could tell it just wasn't real. It wasn't legit. It wasn't genuine. And it just wasn't going to work out for us. And Wesley, before when you were talking about you, you initially had bought five watches off uh, Anthony and that's how the relationship went. And then I don't know if I got the timeline right. You said then three weeks later, you that's when you gave him such a vast amount of watches? No, 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 no. So, so originally it was first of the year I bought something for my wife and I bought five or six, you know, watches. And I mean, it was a really good deal. I mean, from a retail yeah. best you could really ask for. You call in today, you had it tomorrow. Totally understand. Um, at that point, you know, I'd sell for, I mean, you know, watching Buckley and, and Anthony and those other guys on the TikToks. So I just said, man, I want to do some of this kind of just for fun. And I was buying something. It's a hard business. I was unable to sell anything for any kind of real money. Anthony was like, man, shoot me a few over here. I'll sell them. And he did. Oh, so that's how you accumulated your stock over time, yeah. kind of tr trying to emulate kind of some of the like, <laughs> flipping that you've seen that was going on. When you're doing what I've been doing for 16 years straight, the same thing every day, just seeing something new and cool was kind yeah, of Yeah, no, I get it. Believe me. Um, I but anyway, I was lucky to make $300 on a watch, and he was making $6,000 on the same piece. So I sent it yeah. to him. He would give me 15 20% of the profit. It was a good deal, and it worked out, you know, two or three weeks in a row like that. And I was, I saw a, a real return of you know, five or six grand a week. And then that next time, I was just tired of all the bull crap. I had had a few dealers send me, like, not legit watches and things like that. I was tired. I was like, you know what, man, all these things real fast. That's, that's the thing that happens when deals are too good to be true type deals happening. Um, I just want to take a second to thank Golden Bob. I appreciate the $100 Super Chat. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not reading them all tonight, guys, because we're in the middle of talking shop here, but I just want to acknowledge and do appreciate it. Now, I have a question I want to point back towards John. Do you feel that, and like TPG is a prime example of this, but I'm sure there's others as well. I feel like the main victims in this is always the end consumer, right? Dealer to dealer seems to cover their ass a bit, you know, or t cleans it up in-house, right? There's always a, a solution worked out, but it seems to be the end user who gets beat down or like um I, I mean i don't know if you agree with the statement but like a guy like wesley will get sucked into one of these ploys from a guy like this um whether i don't know if you agree with that or not but just from what i'm assuming is happening and they get taken like there's no safeguards for this well there's the safeguard is yourself you've got <laughs> your capabilities and limitations when it comes to you know learning a new business OK, everybody looks at this stuff because of social media. And I find this all the time. I mean, we've got people out there and I mean, I'm, I'm going to be real nice right now that have absolutely no business counseling people on buying watches. They have no business. They don't know what they're talking about. And that's coming from me. Yes, I'm being a gatekeeper. I'm very sorry. OK, mm -hmm. I, I have certain, you know, I have a bad, you know, <laughs> view of a lot of these folks that you know, we all have, see the same thing on youtube every day right oh i know and i mean look there are guys that have been doing this a long time that you know what they 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 understand the game you know most of the dealer to dealer you know scams that have gone on over the years okay we're million dollar scams but you know it was dealer to dealer so we all suck it up you know if somebody flakes on you you know whatever it is it is what it is when it happens to end users, I mean, I took it really personally, you know, because I'm a dealer's dealer, you know, I go, you know, I'm a wholesale guy. I don't really want to sell to retail people. It's a fucking annoying thing. It's really annoying. And I, you know, when I saw this, I just felt for Bob. I really did. You know, I, I just, you know, I just felt him that, you know, he was legit and he was honest about losing his shit. And the people that, you know, have reached out to me, you know, are not the guys that lost a lot of money like Wesley. I mean, they're, they're guys that lost one watch, 
You know, I had a guy text me that lost, he gave him, he gave Anthony his Explorer 2. Okay, it was the only watch he had. And Anthony was supposed to either sell it or trade it or something, whatever. And, you know, it's like when guys do consignment, it's like you don't realize what consignment really is. Okay, what consignment is, is you not you trying to get the last dollar from a guy who's getting more than the last dollar from an end user. Okay, and it's just it's just not a good business. It's like I don't do consignment. Okay, it's like I'm not going to get a watch from you and promise you more money than you're you know, than I would pay for it up front and then beat somebody up on the front end. It's just not the way you do business, okay? And we were watching, you know, this guy posting numbers and stuff like that. And I mean, when I was watching all of this stuff, I said to myself, and people would always bring this guy up, you know, TPG in um, my, my lives. And they'd be like, well, you know, oh, he's scamming. And I'd be like, hey, look, you know, maybe he's got a, a sugar daddy. Maybe he's got an investor. I know a lot of businesses where guys throw money into it and they turn their back and, you know, they let people run wild. And I'm saying to myself, I'm like, wow, nobody's watching this guy. You know, he's out there spending money like a drunken yeah. sailor. OK, I run a business. OK, I do a lot of money. OK, I don't go out and act like that. I'm a little more responsible. I'm a little older. And I remember when I was in my 40s and I spent a lot of money. OK, even then I had to have the biggest house out of the you know, the newest car. I had to wear a hundred thousand dollar watch back in the early two thousands. Okay. When it was a hundred thousand dollar watch it was like a million dollar watch today. And it's like, I didn't piss money away like that. Okay. And I'm watching this guy and I'm saying, wow, this guy's spending a lot of money. I know the margins on these things, even, you know, for rip off retail type pricing. And it's like, right. none of it makes sense. And when, you know, when all of this came to, came to, to be, it was like, wow, you know, it's not like I told you so. It was like, wow, you know, I mean, there had to be some red flags that were all over the place, you know, but nobody could really prove it. You know, they were just bad vibes from the Texas days and stuff like that. But, you know, when he went out to L.A., it was like, you know, it looked like I don't know where he got that seed money from. Somebody right. put money. In that company. Yeah, he definitely had a shot in the arm when he moved to L.A., oh. it seems like. Well, that had to be the, the prereq to go out there, right? There had to be some yeah. type of incentive, some type of incentive-laden deal with money in his pocket. Just real quick before we move on, uh, I'm getting some flack in the chat, so I just want to give these guys their credit. Golden Bob, $100, flippity dippity do. Wesley sucks. That's not nice. Uh, he says, great show, JJ. You're the best. We got Bob NYC. Such a great stream today. Ron the Actuary wants to know the best aftermarket straps for Seiko 5s. Ron's just breaking out tops. He's a friend of ours. Chad Plebo says, I'm EA on Reddit. I've talked to Wesley a lot. He's a solid guy and a victim on this. And then Ron again says, John and Wes, has anyone really been far even as decided to even – I don't know what he's saying. He must be having a few. Ron, I'm sorry. I don't understand that. And Brody says, John, what is your favorite Buckley dial watch and model? I don't know if you want to answer any of those. I don't really care. Well, it's up to you. <laughs> Not to be rude. Sorry, guys. I'm just. Oh, Buckley dial. That's my favorite. The what? Blue? With the white hands? The blue one with the white hands. Yeah. yeah blue with favorite. white Roman and white hands. That's my right. favorite. Yeah. Carl Cohen course, has. We, we buy and sell it back and forth from each other. <laughs> and of course, we got to pull uh, answer Brody's question because he's a new member. And I appreciate that. Thank you, Brody. So let's get I back to pull this up, man. I have to pull this up. Just yeah, so yeah. people know who we have right now. If you search for Blue Buckley Dial, yes. like it's everywhere on eBay, on all the stores, on all the logs, Reddit, all the other <laughs> Mr. Watchley watch charts, Blue Buckley Dial, it's definitive, folks. Yeah. Yes. Can you pull up that Warren thing so we could show? I don't know if uh, if John could even see it, or uh, we don't know again if this is even real. But um, this is oh, that... what's going. This is what's going around. Wow, well, I can't freaking see. Well, it just, I can read it to you. It basically, if you, I don't know if you can make it any bigger, uh, nope. it basically it. just says def, de, defendant name Anthony uh, William Farrer, and then violation date, filing date was March 29th. Then it says upcoming scheduled events, and it has a court date of August 30th at 9 a.m. And it says uh, WRI, but then it says warrant issued, CLDR canceled, which I've heard means you didn't show up to something important like a, a court date and they're not having it. It's not like an excused absence. This was like a no show. Now there's a warrant issued. Yeah. I think, I think there's, there's more going on behind the scenes. I, I, I do believe so. Maybe the feds are involved. Maybe who knows, 
you know, but he did have a DUI and it's not, you know, he was on probation or parole or whatever. I think probation, like 48 month right. probation like that. And it's like, usually when that happens, if you don't appear, you know, or even they may just have, you know, pulled the warrant, you know, pulled his, his bail or whatever, if he was bailed right. out, who knows? You well, know? from, from everything I've heard, if this is real, it's DUI related. So, you know, there's that. And then we got AD never calling with 50 bucks. He says, damn, I missed the whole show. Have to watch from the beginning. Congrats to JJ and crew for what I'm sure is a great stream. Absolutely. We got 47th Street legend in the house. We got Wes joining us. How could we go wrong here? So, all right. Where were we? So he goes to, he goes to LA. Do you think that's where it really started going downhill? Like the lifestyle, everything just caught up to him and it was just too much? Not before that. Well, I think I mean, that's when he lost all sense of balance, right? There probably was a Marco and some guys around no. him. No, that's the problem, Huff, is that nobody even in Dallas no, can, I agree. even tried to contain him. Like, I this agree. is when he talks of things, and, and John, by no offense intended, when John said, you know, he's been sober for many years, TPG said, you know, I've hit rock bottom. He used those terms, and he said he's going to AA meetings, right? The hitting rock bottom, and you can't save people from the rock bottom, and there's steps you work and whatnot. It's all fucking bullshit. He's not doing well, the next any day. Of that he was stuff. back at it. This is the alpha <clears throat> attitude that's going right. to get me out of it. Well, he called right. him. He called rock bottom on yourself. Can you do that? Like yeah, you know, tough. I've decided today's rock bottom. Tomorrow's day after rock bottom, I'm good. Here, I, here I am. I don't, I don't know how that works, but rock bottom is when I, I, I do. And I apologize, like, JJ. Oh, and JJ, you tell me if you don't want to do this. But Wesley did jump on. I don't know if there's anything else. Anything else Wesley wanted to address that John had said. Um, because Wesley, we've seen him with his, you know, daughter and his wife before. John also. Right. I want to respect their time. No, yeah. I just I kind of heard some of that, and I mean, I think it was, you know, John, somebody obviously everybody around respects, and um, he's he's been around all the time. He knows a lot, and I just you know, when somebody like that kind of questions your character, I just wanted to make sure you understood kind of mm -hmm. where I was at with it. Um, it. It was a dumb decision to do the way I did it, but. I mean, I got excited, got caught up in it, and um, I mean, it's just pretty black and white. If I could do it again, I wouldn't. But um, the numbers I saw were real. It wasn't, it wasn't made up stuff. And a lot of people say, you know, why didn't you do your research? Um, I mean, I kind of did, but the only thing you could find negative about Anthony is some Reddit stuff. And at the same time, there must have been a hundred ads who have all come clean out. They were all fake and made up about me because of my association with Anthony. It well, just, you also have streams promoting him, right, and giving him compassion, which is also making it look bad, which is another whole... It's just like, everything I saw about myself was a lie, and they've now since been deleted. But I was supposed to believe what was said about him. So it was kind of, you know, it, it was just yeah. weird. I, I get it. Um, in the end, they were right. But, you know, it wasn't like... Um, I, I've never done one transaction with somebody he's got. Our, our only deals were he sold something, and he paid me. Um, I was never on the other end of that, um, you know, since the day we started. But um, well, I've, well, go ahead. Was someone going to say something? I'm sorry. I, I, I actually can I highlight a comment, Ron. The actuary, there is something about this. At the end of the day, like, why is the guy who got scammed for a million dollars apologizing? It is like, the, the, while while obviously, including myself, I've expressed, I've said, there's a spectrum of there's there was some possible, you know financial motive, mismanagement, whatever. But at the end of the day, Wesley is out a million. And even John himself mm -hmm. said, regardless of anything, on a personal level, that fucking sucks. Uh, and to that point, they only did it because I thought I was going to make a shitload of money. I mean, I don't <laughs> the, only reason, yeah. we the only reason we did it. Um, so I'm not going to lie. I've been clear about that. I, I mean, I thought I was going to make, you know, 10% where I was making, you know, a fraction of that on yearly returns on, uh, you know, just – money and savings and also yeah um i mean i don't want to mislead anybody i did it. i mean listen that's how every great ponzi scheme in america w was because of people just like that right well i i just don't like to throw around the people that i can't and we're not law enforcement so we can't make any claims i'm not looking to get slandered here so uh you know i'm careful throwing around any of those type of words you know i get it you know a lot of people say it but I always have to throw that in there. Like we're not legal experts. We are not law enforcement. So can't really say if that's exactly what's going on here. I mean, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion. I wasn't implying. I was just pointing. No, no, I'm just putting it out there for, you know, clarity's sake. Um, but, 
I don't want to take up any more of your time. Just uh, I thought um, with John on there for a time. Yeah, we we appreciate you hopping on, Wes, and uh, you know putting it out there. You know, as you always do. So I mean, one thing anyone can say is you always show up and answer whatever questions you can. So you know, we do appreciate that. And All right, do. absolutely. Y'all have a good night, man. Thank you. Good night, Wes. Good, I just good, luck. To... good luck to you. Yep. I just want to pull this up here. So William Davis says calendar cleared because of warrant. He doesn't have to show on 830 for that matter. Okay. So I guess they, he had an appearance, but now that he has a warrant, they canceled it, I guess. I don't know. This is a, it's some interesting it stuff. Again, like a drug class or something he was supposed to go to and you possibly know, get in show for mind. Right. And then they, you know what I always said? And, and I, I mean, I, I had my, one of my attorneys, I have my, my, we have a couple of attorneys that we have that we deal with. And I had one of my guys, you know, speaking in the background during one of the TikToks. And my thing was, you know, as a person who, who, you know, in recovery for a little bit, it's like my first thing, like if this person is claiming to have all of these, you know, issues with drugs and alcohol and gambling and, you know, spending and this and that. First place you go, if you want to even begin to make good on all of this stuff is go to some kind of a rehab, get your shit together. Okay. You don't start doing, you know, YouTube videos with, you don't make that a series out of it. It was so offensive. Yeah, I, 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 I can't tell you how offensive that was. I mean, what? just as a if my if the person who got me 20 years ago did some shit like that, like I said, be walking with a limp would be way. And I said this on my TikTok. It's like out of a half a million bucks. OK, I wound up getting, I don't know, after legal fees, maybe 160 back over four years. I'd rather see him walking with a limp. OK, <laughs> It's not about the money at that point. Yeah. And maybe I'm just a fucked up individual. Maybe I'm just, you know, old school. Okay. But that's the problem with social media and all this stuff. Nobody's accountable at that level anymore. Everybody thinks they could do whatever the hell they want. And it's like, it's not like that in the real world sometimes, you know? And I just think that there are people in this racket right now, and I call it a racket. I mean, <laughs> at my level, it's like, you know, I wake up in the morning and I make money doing this. That's what I do. Okay. These other people are perpetrating a fraud because they have absolutely no clue what they're talking about. They don't know what they're describing. They don't, they don't know what they're selling to the next person who is coming to them like Wesley did. And I, right. and I may sound like I'm really insensitive to his plight on a money level, on a personal level, the man's got a family. He fucked up. Okay. Yeah. He really fucked up. Yeah. And he got caught up in the hype. Like, probably 50% of the people that you see on Wait, TikTok. You know the wife's not letting you forget that one anytime soon. As Wesley said on air. Yeah. Hey, you know what? That That's, you know, there's, there's a part of me that learned that lesson 20 years ago. And I did all my due diligence. You know, I had all the stuff. I had all the information. I still got screwed. You know? And it's like, that's why it's like, I'm really, you know, I look at people that are selling watches today. And I see them, they post, you know, pictures of watches. Oh, this watch, uh, you know, $10,000 comes with an appraisal. A fucking appraisal means nothing, okay? And if it's not an appraisal from a registered appraisals, you know, organization, means nothing. Yeah. You're not even allowed to do that. You're not allowed to run auctions in your groups and stuff like that. You're not allowed to do raffles, okay? We don't do that shit in my group. We run a fucking tight ship because I am a liability maniac. I do not want anything to come back and bite me. So the I'm thing real is you're a real businessman, though. You've been doing this for a long time, and right. you're smart, and you learn all this stuff. And I'm not saying that excuses anything, but I could see how people could say, like, personally, I think he's, a, uh, like, just getting back to Wesley a second, he's a genuine guy, but I could see how people think he could be involved in it. And, I, I mean, at the end of the day, do I know? No, I'm just, you know, I ask questions, he answers. Sure. But I understand people's argument, like, how could you not do anything right. so, so speaking know, of the level. florida guy right that we've got four new jersey new york guys right <laughs> it, it is a it, i i i know the west i know lots of wesley's man i my hvac guys are wesley right the guy who does the fences are wesley landscapers are wesley's it is a different culture dude and even when i do business in 
technology, the culture in San Francisco versus San Diego versus Austin, Dallas versus New York are wildly different, wildly different. And the levels of paranoia and contract wildly different. So I personally, again, like I said, a spectrum, I actually can see, I see what, I see what happened here. And it would be easy for me to say, oh, you're just a schmuck. I just don't think he's a schmuck. Right. And no, I think I he's know paying for his mistakes. Hand, he's paying yeah, the, the good old boy right, handshake you know? deal where you trust people. Yeah. I, I I get that, but I'm just saying I could see how people could see could believe I it. Get it. Oh no, I get it. And, and I get you know, it. How could you, you know, be that? You know, for lack of a better word, that ignorant. You know, uh, to not cover yourself at all. But I mean, at the end of the day, he is paying for it. You yeah. know, or even like. But I also think it greed right? drove that to a certain perspective yeah, like you don't go from 100%. a couple uh watches you know five watches to all of a sudden shipping out 50 and he said that weeks. absolutely There's like, no like how right. does that i mean you could say very, and that's why i'll give wesley credit he yeah. was very forthcoming like hey i thought it was gonna make a fuck ton of money yeah you, you could know? say one good. person who wouldn't take an interview is tpg i sent the message just ignores it um, he only goes on the channels that give him sympathy and say he's uh deserves another chance now as a watch dealer does that offend you a guy who's been in this business 30 years People saying, give him another chance in your industry and give hey, me another black eye. I learned 20, well, in the mid 90s, okay, that, okay, how am I going to say this nicely? You Don't know what? It, oh, just say it. No, just say, just say it. it. But I've just got to get, get the context right, okay? Right. Early on in recovery, okay, I had, you know, peers and sponsors and people that were doing that were around longer than me. And you know what? One of my favorite people on the planet, she was a, a counselor that I had. And she used to say to me, she was like, my love and my support is not unconditional, motherfucker. She'd say it just like that. <laughs> like, it's not unconditional. And you know something? It's like, hey, listen, if this dude got his shit together Okay, went out and got out of this business because this business is your people, places, and things. Talk about that shit. Okay, go out there, dig a fucking ditch for a couple of years, get your shit together, do your 90 and 90, get a sponsor, work the steps, do your shit. Okay, the way you're supposed to do it. And then, you know, you start making amends. Okay, and, and you know, and giving, giving back in a way that's going to be positive for you and others. Okay, then, you know, everyone is redeemable. I was a real piece of shit, okay, before I got my shit together, okay? I was not a good guy. But it's like you you look at a person who is just so arrogant, and I'm the most arrogant person in the world as, as a sober guy, okay? <laughs> I can be really arrogant, okay? But I understand that humility is, is the first and foremost tool needed for self-correction. And when I needed to be humble, I got fucking humbled, okay? And I never forget that shit. This boy has 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 his bottoms have trap doors because he is not getting honest with himself about his demons and his demons are going to haunt him for a long time is he irredeemable no not at all nobody is nobody thought that i would ever you know amount to anything you know 30 years ago okay but you know what here we are some of us you know we we recover i don't like that word recover it's like you know we are recovering and it's like you have to be open to suggestion. And if you're not, okay, this dude, I don't know who the fuck was advising him. That was my thing that I said with my attorney. I'm like, who the fuck is advising this idiot? Yeah. He's out there just digging a ditch <laughs> and, and he's not getting out of it. You know, when you're in a ditch and you want to get out, stop digging. This cat was just in there with a backhoe, just going <laughs> off. And it's like, right. bro, somebody stop this guy because he is going to be locked up just for being an asshole. I mean, you know when cops just like will bust a person for being an asshole? This yeah, guy is fucking book thrown at if he ever gets charged. Okay, we don't even know if he's gonna get charged. Cause a lot of this stuff, hey, I put a I put my watch in a box and I send it to you. I'm a fucking idiot if I'm not doing my due dil diligence. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? It's like you gotta get a judge that's gonna be amenable to, you know, be be understanding of all of this stuff. You don't know what's gonna happen. The IRS, on the other hand, I don't know. You know, this kid had this kid, this fucking scumbag had absolutely no regard for anything and anybody. OK. And you know what? He Anybody that drives drunk. OK. And I'm not saying that I've never driven drunk back in the day. No, but okay? six DWIs. Come on. It's a and, bad yeah. look. I've never yeah. been locked up for that kind of stuff. Thank God. OK. But I'm just saying that's just a bad fucking look, man. 
that is just a bad thing. And he just yeah. got busted. There's that video of him and his fucking Ferrari sitting there tanked up. And yeah, it's like we're just talking to that TikTok guy. Stuff for, do it for the passion. <laughs> do it for the what fucking passion. You're an idiot. Right. You know, somebody. You know, he's he's putting everyone in danger. And it's like that's the real tragedy here. You know, like this person who obviously has some kind of skill, okay? He has yeah. a skill set. As as much as people want to berate him and, you know, knock him, okay? This person sold a fucking dream to a lot of people, okay? Yeah. And you know, I mean, there's nothing against Wesley. I mean, Wesley's, you know, salt of the earth kind of guy, you know, hard working guy supposedly. OK, guy that, you know, works with his hands, runs a company. It's like this dude got sucked in. You know why? Because everyone's feeding into the fucking hype of being a watch dealer because the market was strong. Guess what, people? The market is fucking coming down fast. And oh, my God, the chickens are going to come home to roost. I love a down market. It eliminates the riffraff gets all of these fake dealers back to selling insurance and cars and working at Starbucks and doing all this other shit that they used to do before they said, hey, I can go to an AD and flip it and make $2,000 if I buy a watch. That's what we're dealing with here. That's the mentality. And it's a bad fucking thing. Okay. The only thing that's going to stop it is a complete fucking crash of this market. When COVID hit, okay, I was in Miami. My, it was my son's birthday. And we were in Palm Beach having dinner. And the next day was like, everything was shutting down. We had to get on a plane and cancel our trip. I went down there for an IWJG show and they canceled it. I was like, what the fuck? But my son was down there. My wife and I were down there and we went down with his friends. And, you know, we came back and I remember, I will never forget this. I still have the uh, cancel check. I bought a Daytona off a dealer for I think 11,500 bucks. Okay, everybody was panicking right then because every the market was going crazy, this and that. I remember I flipped it two days later for thirteen five to a guy out in Hong Kong. The guy asked me to hold it in New York in the safe. I held that watch basically about three year, two years. Okay, when I gave the guy the watch, he flipped it for twenty five thousand dollars. Okay, a lot of people were like, "Wow, why don't you just sell the watch?" And I was like, "No, I don't do that shit." Okay, that's not how I operate. But I'm just saying. That's the kind of upswing that occurred during COVID. COVID, I did more business during COVID. I mean, I do a lot of, you know, nickel and dime small business parts wise. Okay, 1,000, 1,500, 5,000, this and that. I don't care to sell watches. Watches are a pain mm. in the ass. Parts are my thing. Yeah, and that's what the I, profit margin is too, right? Oh my God, profit margin. I mean, I sell a watch. It, my margins go anywhere from 5% to 12%. That's my margin. And as the watch goes up in price, the margin comes down. With parts, right. you know, if I find a new old stock built GMT dial that I buy for, you know, 200 bucks off somebody in a lot, when I get a bag of shit sent to me, I'll sell that dial for 20 grand. You know, right. that make money in this business. But you got to also understand that you have to know the parts. The problem with all of these new dealers, that all they know about is, you know, a model number, check it on Chrono 24, yeah. look on Moda, get a median, ask a price. They don't look at the bracelet codes. They don't look at the serial number sequences to see if they're actually, you know, redone or something like that. They don't look inside the case back to make sure the case back, you know, for a pointed guard isn't, you know, a non-dated case, an undated case back from the 70s that somebody popped on. They're not looking at that shit. And that's why stuff gets thrown out there. And a lot of these people that are buying right now, okay, they're all coming off, you know, having a bunch of money. A lot of people have more money than, than common sense when it comes to this stuff. They'll look at a picture of a vintage GMT and they'll be like, oh, wow, that watch is a $20,000 watch. I'm going to get it for 11000 Meanwhile, you're looking at the sum of the parts, which is like six, 7000 bucks at the end of the day, if it's a bunch of crap. And these are the people that are starting to sell right now. I'm getting all kinds of requests every day. People want to sell me, you know, big gold watches. I have a friend of mine that just texted me, one of my guys. He just bought a rose gold Daytona about two months ago from an AD, paid retail, okay? He's buried in it, buried in it. He's like, John, take this watch for me, please. Just take it and get rid of it for me. I'm like, all right, I'll find somebody to buy it for you. He's my friend, okay? It's not like a TPG consignment thing. This is a friend of mine mm -hmm. that's asking me to help him out. Right. You can't, you know, you can't sustain you know, this kind of market, okay? Danny, who I set up with for 15 years in New York on, on 47th Street, he said to me, he's like, John, do you really think that you're never gonna be able to walk into a Rolex AD and buy a steel Submariner ever again? 
And I had to think about that. I'm like, wow, yeah. And this is like maybe a year ago, he said this to me. And I was like, you know what? You're right. Sooner or later, this hype, the, 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 the thirst for all of this is going to subside. Not so much from a passion standpoint, from a financial standpoint. Okay? Yeah. And when that thirst starts pulling back, right. you're going to see a lot of people. And not so many, you know what, dealers, we prepare for this shit. If we're smart, the guys that have been around longer than, you know, five years that claim themselves to be fucking experts or specialists, that shit bugs the fucking yeah. shit out of you. When somebody says, oh, I'm a specialist, get the fuck out of here. You've been doing this for fucking two and a half years. Are you fucking kidding me? I want to, so I have, oh, all right, go, go ahead, JJ, sorry. Uh, uh, buying and selling shit, you're a fucking fraud. But you, <laughs> but people look at these people yeah. like, God, right. this person said, get the fuck out of here. This guy doesn't know a fucking thing. Okay, yeah, they started in 2019. Is the their their uh, you know, just before COVID, and it's like all of a sudden, well, you know, I'm gonna look at this. I'm looking at the Sham Fairs. It's like get the fuck out of here. Don't say <laughs> words to me. We will have a fucking problem. It's like I, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm 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 not I'm not good with that kind of stuff. I right. came up in business, you know, before the internet was a thing, and we, you know, how we made, you know, how we learned, we fucking lost money. Okay, right. that's, that's a good way to learn. It's it, it, yeah. it, it, a lesson that sticks with you when you lose money, you know. But you know, it makes you really careful. Okay, right. when these guys are playing with other people's money, and you know, sad thing would happen to this dude with Wes. Yeah. Okay, and this guy, you know what? Hey, a fool and his money. I mean, I'm not saying that he's a fool, but you know what? The signs were there. Okay, well, it's All easy to mess around, right? It's easy to mess around on consignment when it's not your money. When you paid a hundred thousand for that watch, you're going to make sure it's the right price, the right deal, a lot differently than when you take it off someone else's hands, you know. But oh shit, you're on shutdown. No, you know what really oh, bugs bug the <laughs> shit out of me? I'm back. You know what really <laughs> bugged the shit out of me? It was like when he was telling people to buy watches and short them to establish cash flow. I mean, yeah. that just absolutely made me fucking insane. That is like <laughs> such a recipe for just a bad, and it's not so much, I, I, who gives a fuck if the person that's doing it goes under? It's the people that you're going to do business with. Like if I sell somebody watch and something is wrong, okay, I'm there and I'll give you a refund, okay? You notice I have a really good reputation all over right. the internet. Correct. If anybody's ever gone online to look for Buckley scam somebody, you'll never see it. Buckley did this. Buck you know why? Because if something's wrong, I give them a refund. It's like, here you go, man. Here's a refund and a label. You got it. Send it back. No problem. If I have to eat it, I'll eat it. Okay? Because right. my reputation is worth more than 10, 20, 50, whatever. It, it's worth more than that. Okay? Yeah. These long term. People, long term long thinking. These people don't have, they're not writing the checks. They work for somebody. Right. Okay, 90% of these people you see on TikTok and this and that, they're not their own boss. They don't write the checks. I got fucking five checkbooks over here. Every single one of them, okay, I sign. And it's like, huh, you know what? I don't see these people. They're, they're out there doing fucking deals for fucking $600,000 watches. It's like, oh, I'll give me five fifty. dollars Okay, yeah, sure, I'll give you a check. It's like, get the fuck out of here. Who, who <laughs> believes me? And it's like, we're at the point. And, you know, me and the boys are, are you know, we're at the point where we're going to start evolving into some other kind of stuff. I mean, you know, I'm sick and tired of filming watch deals. And it's yeah, like, yeah, I got to ask, John, while we do have you, how do you guys feel about what you spawned in the Diamond District? Because there's no question you guys have had a certain effect on uh, a lot of the younger watch dealers. In this <laughs> Registered trademark. Well, you know, it's funny. Today we were in 36 West. And last week I had this German film crew following me around. And they were really not happy about it. So, you know, Danny, I, I would set up with Seth and Danny. Seth at Arco. Seth's a dealer for 40 years. Danny's a dealer for 40 years. I know these. Danny and I set up together for 15 years. And, you know, they let me hang out at the booth when I, when I come in one day a week or so. And... We came over and we were shooting a video right at the booth, right in front, and people went fucking ape shit. They called the manager who was on vacation overseas. Manager called up Danny. I'm like, well, listen, we'll stop. I mean, you know, yeah. we're not going to do it. But everyone's walking around with a camera. That's how the IWJG is now. Everyone's walking around with a camera. It's all about, you know, it's all about the sizzle and not about the yeah. steak. And I'm kind of, you know, I've always been a steak guy. You know, I understand, 
how to how to create hype. I've always been really good at self promotion. The Buckley Dial registered trademark, <laughs> and you know it's like no. We, even, even in the negotiations, you kind of did your thing with the how much is this five thousand? So how much do you want for this five thousand? Some you know. I think everybody rock. does that now, right? <laughs> yeah. He's all over the place, okay? <laughs> yeah. And people go crazy for them. Everything I ship out, I stick a bunch of these things. I stick a bunch of swag in. People are like, oh, how come you don't sell merch? It's like, so I'm going to charge somebody to, to promote your promote brand. This. <laughs> nice. You know, yeah. that's not really a nice way to be. You know, at some point, listen, at some point, we're going to come up with merch, but it's going to be like the coolest, absolute, like must have shit that you will ever see. It's like, but till that time, if I have stuff, I give it away to people. I gave some guy stopped me. I was in Wawa and I see this guy walking up to the car. I'm sitting there in the car like this and I'm starting to reach. And it's like, okay, no. <laughs> okay. It's a guy with two kids. I don't have to worry about it. And it's like, I pulled up. He's like, man, I was watching your live this morning. And oh my God, man, I love watching it. I'm like, yeah, okay. So I reached into my glove box. I pulled out some little rubber bracelets and some pucks and some stickers for the kids. <laughs> Hmm. Oh, it's like, it's, it's a beautiful thing. I get stopped all over the place. I mean, I'm in the supermarket. I had some Hasidic guy walk over to me. He's like, you're the guy on TikTok. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it is <laughs> amazing when you see all the people you reach, right? It's, 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 it's a wonderful thing. And I try to, I don't want to sound wishy-washy, but cause I hate wishy-washy. I'm, I'm a hard, I'm a hard ass, but in a lot of ways I, you know, I understand people and I understand and I have a lot of compassion in me for others, believe it or not. And it's like when people come up, I, I will never just brush them off. You know, why we have right. security with us sometimes, you know, most of the time. And it's like, you know, people come up to me and they're like, oh, wow, you're buckling. I'm like, yeah, take a picture with me. I'm in the Metropolitan Museum at the Lagerfeld exhibit. And this kid comes up to me. He's like, from Australia, he's like, hey, mate, I see you in the TikTok. Can I take a picture with you? And I'm like, yeah, okay. My wife is looking at me like, my wife still doesn't get it. I mean, she just, she is just, she's way behind the scenes. Like when it comes to this, she and I have been partners in this, in Tuscany Rose since she named it, you know, in the 90s. And she's like, you fucking ego, man. You're a fucking get out of here with this shit. <laughs> gives me shit sometimes people but, enjoy it and that's what makes sales though right like they make that connection even though you don't know them they feel like they know you right and they want to yeah. be a part of the brand you know it's more it's more of it's it doesn't i don't know if it translates to sales for me i'm i'm notoriously you more know relationships i would say more than sales right it's more of relationships online it'll put people in the chat group but when it comes to like real-time sales I'm I'm a guy that deals with the same people mostly all the time. There there are stragglers. Like if somebody moves me, like if somebody calls me up and gives me a good story, it's like all right, I'll find here. Go to Little Eddie. You know he'll take care of you. You know I would rather give it off to some, hand the ball off to somebody and let them you know do it. I mean people are like, oh, you're not making commission. No, I'm not doing that. If Eddie has a customer that I need, he'll send him to me. That's what we do. Sure. About like you said something before JJ, and and I wanted to jump in. It's like, you know, I preach all of this, you know, solid business practice, okay, which is really important. But I mean, we handle, you know, quarter million dollar watches on a handshake most of the time. I write a little piece of paper, I hand it to them, and they hand me a watch, you know, right. that's relationships, that's trust, okay? It's like, when you see, and these are people that have been in the business as long or longer than I have. And when you see like Wes, I mean, and I feel for him, he got sucked in, you know, by the hype and the lure of quick money. And that's how I lost money 20 years ago. The lure of not quick money, the lure of secure money. Okay. Hmm. And it's like when you, 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 you see that element. Okay. That is just straightforward, honest, you know, I know that if I go up to little Eddie, okay. And I leave, you know, a big watch with him, he's going to send me a wire in the morning. You know, right. if he does, if Yasha hands me, you know, uh, uh, you know, an Arabic, you know, diamond Daytona, platinum Daytona, he knows I'm going to hand him a check and that check's going to be good to go. You could deposit it now. If I can't right. check that minute, okay, I won't buy the watch. Right. And there are times when, you know, I'll say to myself, it's like, 
you know, eh, do I really want to stock this? You know, I don't have a home for it right away. You know, everybody wants to go out there and be the, you know what the Goomal of Ace is? No, what's that? That's like a word that we made up, the Goomal of Ace, okay? <laughs> That's like the, the the big shot, the Goomal of Ace. Right. Like everybody <laughs> wants to be the of Ace, okay? You want to go out there, I'm taking the Richard Mealy. I hate fucking Richard Mealy. Oh, I'm taking... <laughs> The, uh, you know, the 5980 or I'm taking the Nautilus and this and that. Yeah, I'm taking it no matter what. I'm going to sell it. Next thing you know, dude is stuck with it. He's got to sell it short or he's got to give it to somebody on consignment because he's afraid to lose a few bucks. You can't be, if you're not losing money in this business at some level, you're not buying enough. I always right, say right. that. I lose money on, I don't know, 10% of everything here. I'm going to lose money on this fucking piece. This God, God awful piece of shit that I bought today for <laughs> Don't ask me why. I just, I, I didn't look it up. I didn't, I, you know, the guy told me about it a week ago. He's like, hey, John, do you want this Frederick Constant? I was like, oh, God, it's a piece of shit. He shows me a thing. I see a little car in the thing. It's a chronograph. It's a nice size chronograph. Eh, $1,000. I look you online. Might- and it's like 800 <laughs> bucks. Nobody's bidding on it. I'm like, oh. So, so real quick, I just want to get these super chats in because they're, they're piling up. And I want to get Ali and Cap a chance to ask a question each. They've been pretty quiet. And then we're probably going to wrap. This way, you know, we could... uh we could I can go uh, to get this home. Yeah, yeah I know. I appreciate you staying up late for us, but You're let me just get wonderful. so we got RZ says, Buck, please help. Why do I just want to slap Tyler every time I see his face on TikTok? Gotta um, get on one. <laughs> we got Toyota Mo. He says, I upvoted to do. We have Neo who says the community owes Reddit EA a standing ovation. And then we have Real World Curly with ten dollars says, John, I have uh I've been following you and Bob. You guys know of many other victims besides Bob and Wesley. I believe Bob confirmed 1.4 million victims besides Wesley. Is this true? Um, I to be more than that, believe it or not. There's a lot more people that are just that. You know what the sad part of this thing is? And I'm going to be really brief because I know you got to wrap. Right. The sad part is I had a guy call me up. He had bought a steel Submariner from an AD in, in Canada. And he had it. For, he said, John, I wore it two days. I sent it to Anthony. I wanted a two-tone. That was five months ago. Okay. I said to him, give me the information, send me the invoice. You know, I'll send it to Bob. He's got a guy that's working on it right now. You can get involved. He's like, no, 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 no. You know, maybe he's going to make good. I was like, bro, he's not going to make good. That's what a lot of people, they're still stuck thinking that, you know what? Someone's going to make them whole. And it's like, I I couldn't believe in his comments uh, on the videos videos where he was basically basically calling calling anyone anyone who confronted confronted him him or or talk. Is someone here in that go? Yes. Yes. Is it it me? Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. They're gone. Yeah. Yeah. All right. No, we got the echo. No, we still got it. Still got it. Sabotage me, JJ. I lost my train of thought. Go ahead, Hoff. Go ahead. Yeah, I muted JJ. I don't know what happened there. It is his echo. No, I truly oh, lost my train of thought. 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 All man. right, so Ali, hop in to get your question. Cap, get your question because we're going to wrap. And then, uh, Cap, Cap, you go. We'll I let Hoff you, think about yeah. it. We'll let Hoff think about his question. Yeah. Then we'll wrap. One right, question each, guys. That's it. Oh, one, one question. I'll, a little off topic. So, uh, John, I, John, I know you spoke know about, about uh, sports, memorabilia sports memorabilia and being in that business. That so, business. Are you still... Like collecting, like collecting sports memorabilia, sports because I have a Ken Griffey Jr. autographed bat that I got about 20 years ago. Um, it's a cool bat. It is a cool bat, and I use it now more for protection than for uh, making uh, any money on it. Oh, the, that's right. The World Series rings. I still can't tell anybody whose ring it is, but there it is. It's still here. I keep it on my desk. And every once in a while, I put it on, and I play World Series champion. Are you nice. still playing Same softball? Oh, that's beautiful. I love this stuff. You know who I who I know? I know Ken Golden over at Golden Auctions. Ken and I are friends. Yep. And Ken a very, very legitimate auction site that that kind of stuff goes for, you know, he'll get the right money out of it. I've done a lot of business with him selling rings, selling high, high-end, you know, collectible stuff. If you need an invite intro, I'll make it for you. Oh, appreciate that. Yeah. I want 10% cap. All right. I'll, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to keep everyone in line here because we're going to drag on forever. John's going to be cursing me tomorrow morning when he's got to wake up. He's going to say, no, so, no, I Recently, there's running. been a lot of, uh, there's been some some key channels that have really talked down gray market dealers and then they've turned their eye towards the 47th Street, right? Dealers specifically. And which is 
courtesy of, of people like you, where the most history is in this whole bloody industry. What do you feel about people that really have no skin in the game going after 47th Street pretty consistently lately? Listen, you know something? People come after people all the time. This is the real world, okay? You know, I, I, I'd hate to shatter their ego, but, you know, someone talking down a gray market dealer or talking me down, it's not going to hurt me, okay? It's, it's, it's got nothing, you know, it has no weight. It carries no real, you know, <laughs> it carries no weight with me. You know, look, if, if people don't understand 47th Street because they're not there, I spent years there, okay? And there are some of the best people in the world that I do business with, you know, on camera, okay? Because they trust me, I trust them. And you'd be surprised how many deals are, are deleted because the numbers aren't right at the end of the day. It's too cheap or it's too much. Or, you know, the guys just, you know, they don't want to show themselves selling a watch for that kind of money. You know, listen, it's an old boy network. But, you know, you've got this new group of folks that, you know. So for all those <laughs> folks, sorry to interrupt you, Jump. I just wanted to bring home this point. So you are saying the negotiations are 100% legitimate on the My channel. Be because I know there's always a lot of people trying to throw rocks at uh, you guys doing this just for hype. Did you see my ring that I bought? It's like, yeah. you know, here, you want to see watches that I bought? Here, here's the watch I bought from Faber a while ago. You know, here, I bought this one from Faber for 20 grand. I mean, you know, yeah. I do, I, ow, that sucked. Um, <laughs> somebody's going to yell at me for mishandling a Rolex. Um, ding, slight ding, slight ding. Yeah, it's, it's not on consignment. It, it was in plastic. <laughs> Don't worry. It, it could take it. It's not a liver. Okay. You know what? I mean, anybody that wants to badmouth guys on 47th Street, they don't know the guys on 47th Street like I do. I would trust those guys with my life, and I do many times. Okay. It's like, you know, it, your life's work is, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars, a million dollars. You know, I've left watches in Tony's safe, Tranquilo's. When I've gone away on vacation, you know, I've left him a watch roll with, you know, a serious amount of watches in it. Who knows what would happen? But I trust him. You know, I trust his insurance is good. His safe is rated. You know, you've got guys that try to perpetrate like all kinds of bullshit out there. Fucking robberies, this and this and that. Yep. And it's like, you know something? People don't know the game the way we know it. The way that we looked right. at TPG and we, we were like, you know what? Something's not right. It's like when you see, a, you know, a big money deal that's not, you know, <laughs> something's just not adding up. Yeah. Isn't, isn't rated. OK, it can't be rated. It's impossible. You know, it's like when you understand the real ins and outs of the business, it's like you respect the guys on 47th Street because a lot of us do things the right way. You know, right. you get guys that are, you know, that are dirty. They're just dirty. That happens, you know, and it's buyer beware. So you got to go with guys that are established and not these new jacks that just pop up and all of a sudden get, a, you know, an Instagram channel with, you know, a whole bunch of fucking botted followers. And people don't realize that they got millions of followers. It's like, are you serious? I, I've been on Instagram since 2011 or 2012. I got 30,000, 35,000 followers because it's organic. You know, that's the way we do it. TikTok, we blew up, you know, so it just yeah. it is what it is. In a short period of time, too. Amazing to see. Well, In a year. Yeah. All right. Um, well, before we wrap, I do want to ask you, I mean, not that you need us, obviously you massively, you know, TikTok famous and I need you guys. Views everywhere. <laughs> what, anything you want to um, put out there? Like, I know you do the trade shows. You just had one August 13th. Um, anything new coming up you want to let the people know about to follow you anywhere? We could drop all your socials and stuff, but I would love to. Um Obviously, the Vukum Verified Chat Group, buy, sell, trade, legit check, 20 bucks a month, cancel any time. That's my shtick. Um, the new On trade Telegram, right? Telegram group. You'll see it. If you go to Vukum.com or if you go to our um, Instagram or TikTok, there's a link tree in there. You'll be able to hit it and you can see it if you know, you know. Um, there's a new trade show we have coming. This one was wildly successful. We're going to have more dealers this time. It's going to be, a, I mean, it was packed the whole day is and that open to the public it's open to the public absolutely and uh, we have maybe i'll come down to the next one then maybe i'll yeah. come down if, and say you guys are, let me know you will be our welcome guests and awesome. you know we have the best security of any trade show ever we have separate dealer parking lot that is manned by you know armed mm. security off-duty troopers and you know local pd is coming in doing rounds 
Uh, the other thing, uh, be on the lookout for new and different stuff. We're going to start streaming. We have a streaming room set up. We got to set one up over here so that I don't have to go over to Tyler's <laughs> house. And yeah. uh, you know, it's just a, it's a wild ride, and we're having some fun with it. Um, we're in the process of doing a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I know Hoff knows where we're at here with some of this other stuff with with our boy. Um, yeah. I got approached to do a book which is kind of interesting, which right. we're going back and forth. And, uh, you know, we're just, we're just living life and we're not fronting. We're, we're being who we are. And, you know, we sell watches, but we're regular people too. And you know what? It's like, we just want to go about life doing the right thing for ourselves and others. And that's about it, you know? Nothing yeah. else. Like I, those. I think that's what really resonates with your content. Like yeah. to not sound corny, it's authentic. You can tell mm -hmm. it's just some guys like having fun, and you know yeah, you're it's happy like to have your son It's real friend. stuff, right? right. right. Real life I, I, family. I, you're driving in. It's it's cool right. to see. It's a it's a refreshing change of pace. Now, real quick, I just want to ask: Are we are we racing, or we, we'll do that? We next are. Week? We are ready. Right. So, John, at the at the end of the show, um, I know we didn't really focus on the chats today, but. Um, everybody who super chats or stickers, we put them in a race. Uh, the winner of the race just gets entered into a little contest. I do a little flashlight giveaway. It's just something for fun. Um, keep everybody uh, happy. You know, a little little thank you to the 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 because we got a great crew here, small crew but great crew of guys in the chat. Um, so at the end, we um, we have different animals. It's it's kind of fun, like a little cartoon race. Um, I don't know what we're picking tonight. Um, Ali does that. You know, he gets me set up with that. So um, okay, you, want to say prepared? Are you prepared for that, Ali? We'll I'm prepared, race. man. I'm ready to go. We, All right. We so, first, well, guys, if you're going to get a chat in, get it in now if you want to be entered in the contest. Uh, basically, whoever wins at the end of the uh, – we put whoever wins every night. Uh, I don't do this every night, but let's say we do two, three times a week. Uh, at the end of the month, the, the winner – we do an end-of-month race, and they win a prize. And then every end-of-month winner goes in the end of year, and they win a little bit of a bigger prize. Just fun stuff, flashlights, you know. Things like eat, like you know, things like that. Um, it, nothing, it's one of those say. shady raffle type things. You said you no, 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 no. Let me no, say that no, joking no. around. It's 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 a it's a, it's a thank oh, you to, to the guys to keep them engaged. We appreciate it. No, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's gonna bail on us. All right, so let's get this race going. I think we got enough there. Here's Mookie's the last one. That's it. Mookie's in. He's in for the race. Uh, we could do horses, whatever you guys want. Oh, and Van horses. Yeah. Hey, wait, I'm, oh, Van Lux. Lux. I'm right. trying to get in. I'm right. trying to get in. I'm going to send it. Put me in, man. Right, Get we'll me in. Put Cap in while we get him in. And we'll, John, we'll do the race, then we'll end. And if you want to hang out for a minute, we'll say our goodbyes nice, and then you could go. I'm watching. Um, yeah, we go back like that. <laughs> yeah, right. I like Man to go back and say goodbye properly. Right, That's Man it. Looks Cap's looks done. Right. Cap, done. make sure you get it in. Don't fucking stiff me here, all right? He says put me in, and then uh, hey, man. Right, there we go. Who are you going to uh, trust, man? Uh, we always yeah. trust the cap. Cap is stand up as they nah. say. Thank you, John Buckley, for joining. There it is, baby. All right, so here always, we go. We got the, we got the race word. ready. So I would like to know that that John Buckley has a free horse in this race. Yes. Uh, All right. You might get a flash so awesome. Awesome. We <laughs> let me actually turn the volume down so it's tolerable. We're going to shuffle, and we are off. All right, do I get a comment? Here comes Neo. Neo's coming out of the stretch. He's got Captain Subby right behind him. Captain Subby's got the... Uh, oh, here comes Chris the watch on. He's got a lot of energy from Astoria, Queens. He's ready to go, but Neo's holding on to that lead. You know how the Greeks whip them horses. Just kidding, Neo. We love you. Here comes Captain Subby with a late entry on his white horse. He's riding hard. But you know what happens? Somebody always comes out of the backfield. Who's oh. it going to be tonight? Looks like it's going to be Mookie. Mookie's whipping his horse, coming down the stretch. Here he comes. We got about 13 seconds, and I'm running out of shit to say, so somebody better win this race. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running out of breath. Here comes Bob NYC straight out of the backfield from Malibu, straight to Long Island. Here he goes. He's got a one more second to hold the lead. And Bob oh, NYC. Wow, wow, Congratulations for our man, Bob. Couldn't go to a better guy. Bob, let me just tell you something about Bob. What an excellent man. Excellent man. Great guy. Um, he's a real good, real good. There's, a, there's one more surprise to come, JJ. So take your picture. I did. I'm done. You did? All right. Bob yes. NYC completely unannounced and just to make sure that people understand we i do this at my own cost this isn't a raffle there's no super chats i don't get paid the whole joke was unpaid intern but it's literal so bob nyc send me your details completely unannounced because i don't want to be accused of anything you are getting this coca-cola watch as Thanks. well and it's completely random for wow. tonight, tonight only so bob nyc send me your details on ig you are getting this g-shock wow. there you go guys all right, it's been a hell of a show. We've had the man, the myth, the legend, 
John Buckley in the house. We got the Squatch Box. We got the cap. We got Hoff on Smash. You guys rocked everybody in the chat. I appreciate everything you guys did. Yeah. If you enjoyed today's show, please upvote. Make sure you subscribe if you're new here. Make oh, sure you're following uh, John can, Buckley can on I the ask socials. One question before we close, because I feel like Moses is getting a lot of slack in the chat there. And uh, honestly, I know he, he is a unique personality, but he seems like a nice kid who's trying to do he's the a, right thing, yeah. figure it out. Yeah. I, I've met him in really person and worked with Gabe on his team and they were stand-up guys in my experience and i'm happy for him to work with him he's been his father's been in business a long time he gets a bad rap but you know what he's a good kid and you know what i wish him nothing but good things i tell him to be really careful walking around with all that shit on him because there's yeah. a lot mm -hmm. of haters out there you know but he's a good kid man he just is and i like him a lot we all do well there you go maybe in the future we'll get him on i would love you know, you're welcome back anytime, John. I had a great time with you. If you want to bring your son and, and Tyler in next time or whatever you guys want, I'd be open to it. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, I that's Carlos. just what they're looking to do. Out of... We're going to wrap this puppy up. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone again. Leave a comment at the end of the show thank if you, you so can. Much, um, you so we do appreciate it. And on that note, guys, I just got to find my outro, and we are out of here. Good night, guys. Thank you.